Cal does have a lot of great opportunity in the mid screen. We're talking run through, which does help a lot to get kind of that explosivity in neutral. But the pickup opportunity after run through is going to be exceptional with jo with Janet to be able to pick that up in combo right after. So here's the mix opportunity, but air to air for Rasmus to start it out. Yes, indeed. Now there is that down one check, so that's going to avoid the Kano knives. And we're going to get the back throw. Because Janet was summoned as a uh, full on assist, it's going to be a large recharge time right now. But we got Rasmus, who does whip on that uppercut, but doesn't get it. We get the overhead, though. One of the slow overheads that Johnny has. And then we're just going and using that breaker to get out of that damage. Yep, nice ant here, but I'm not sure we really thought that was going to fall through. We already had the back dash off. Unfortunate start for three missed right there. Rasmus really taking advantage of a lot of the uncertainty in this match so far. And here we go, we got uh, the sweep and then now a full on launcher here. And this is exactly where Rasmus wants to be. We have the Kano Ball and then the empty jump kick just in case uh, there was some anti-air attempt. The down twos are trying to come out, especially with those high starters. I mean, just immediate down two from Rasmus, but the Gator Roll starts things off, and unfortunately, you're ducking, not able to block in time. The jump in, Rasmus taking a quick game. And unfortunately, we didn't get to see a whole lot of Janet set up outside of the initial start, right? It was just the setup of the long assist there, trying to get the combo ability through that, but then we, it's that uncertainty that we saw a lot in this first game here of how to really implement janet she is a very new cameo so we're probably going to see a cameo switch back to serena which is you know a, a traditional pick for reptile because it does add that combo consistency but we're sticking right with janet okay just took it to the character select for a moment I 100% appreciate the Janet uh, decision here from 3 Mist. Uh, really trying to figure out um, how to open uh, Rasmus up. And I think that it's going to come down to honestly landing those hits. You know, one thing's for sure is you do have to summon Janet here, but it's Rasmus who starts off this round ending with the Johnny kick. Ooh, almost could have comboed that for, as well. Gets the down two towards the end, but gets hit by the down four. But we have Rasmus just picking it up again for a full damage combo. And again, the setup with the Kano ball to keep you in the corner. That has been a tough round here for three miss because every interaction we were guessing wrong or ducking to try to avoid maybe a throw attempt. I mean, Johnny does start with a lot of highs and you could go that path, but the way that Rasmus is playing, catching with overheads, that's a big call out that you're gonna have to make here. Either up block some of them. Uh, ooh, that's a dangerous gator roll right there with no cameo backup whatsoever. Full quarter carry. And just like this, we do have that Kano attempt. We did drop a little bit early though. This is pressure upon pressure here from Rasmus, who's been trying to catch some of these uh, farther hits. Still mm. continuing that pressure. There is that accidental up block there from three mm. mists. Trying to call out a couple of uh, stand attacks here from Rasmus, but it's just been sweep after checkmate. And then again, pressure down one check, the down two to cover. You know, honestly, I do appreciate, you know me, Usaki, I appreciate a good up block in this game. And I appreciate the three mists attempting the up block interaction that is a threat against Johnny in this, uh, in that particular sequence, because we've been consistently overheaded time and time again. Now that maybe gives Rasmus a moment of pause. It wasn't a successful up block, but at least the gears are turning. And that's what I like to see in these sets is you do start to level up your defensive play. If things aren't working out, you got to try to find answers back here. And three miss still operating on uh, trying to implement some sort of comeback against Rasmus. So we got a couple of those armor gator rolls. It didn't work out for you here. That is generally your go-to on wake up. Serena picked up. This is what you practice with. I guarantee it. This is what's going to get you better safety because you're going to toss out disc after these unsafe options that come out here from Reptile. Most definitely. And also, this is going to contest some of this uh, mid screen to uh, full screen pressure here. Exactly like that. You have the single blade and then you have the multiple. But again, Razzis comes in and is going to continue pressure here. Cana Ball plus the mid check. And then look at the spacing right now. Try to call out the uh, upper gator. It wasn't going to be able to su be successful. We do get out of Serena's first. And this is full corner plus the jump kick that was super deep. And then again, that Kano Ball. Kano is just covering Johnny, especially on these knockdown situations. Fight. Absolutely. Oh, jeez. But see, and Rasmus right here showcasing exactly why it's important to have a cameo back you up on an unsafe opportunity. 
because we do have Kano Knives covering the Shadow Kick and three miss getting blown up in the corner once again. Has to go through the cycle that is Kano Pressure back up with Johnny. And that kick from Johnny, uh, I believe it is a stand four, if I'm not mistaken, is just so good because not only does it have a very quick hitbox, it can reach you pretty far. Guys, that you got this combo already down. <laughs> oh man, El Katui coming out here with the rated Janet. Uh, we'll fight you kids. I'm sorry, this is gonna be a tough one for you here. It's gonna be super toxic, but who knows? I mean, we got the Motaro pick, so this is also a really good mm -hmm. cameo for uh, General Shao already starting up here with the storm cell. There we go. We got the extension. Not gonna get the last hit though. I think it might be a little bit easier to go for the three four uh, at that range in particular because it's a little bit faster than the the cartwheel hit. But you definitely get more damage for cartwheel. Motaro set up. We got the walk, but four four starts things off here for El Kikui. Oh, I have to use Breaker pretty early on that set. Or if I miss that here, still has a bunch of health to work with. Down one check. I honestly like this set so far since the last time I saw We'll Fight You Kids on TNS. We're seeing more of the forward advancing Mataro, utilizing Mataro's shield. Whereas, and also the, the fireball. Whereas I think the last time we saw, we saw a few more risky teleports that really got blown up by We'll Fight Your Kids. So great adjustments so far here. We got a grab to go for a, a turn and a side switch. Tries to bring out Mataro, but that down four is going to stop it. The blocking the launcher because of Motaro's teleport able to uh, actually continue. We do have El Kukui who's just ready for it right now, gonna try to take control of this corner. Yeah, 4224 is the route that we're going for, and it was very consistent. We'll fight your kids finally blocking low, but this time. Oh, another little Ooh. drop here from El Kukui. Dangerous stuff here in this corner situation. Plenty of bar for We'll Fight Your Kids, but we're backing off to set up Motaro. Nice. The board of Nancy Normal does catch El Kikui, but the quick micro duck from El Kikui. Great. And I like that El Kikui is trying to get some of that damage extended with Janet's air move. We're gonna be able to block this fatal. And that should be all El Kikui wrote for this game. Absolutely. The difference in this set since compared to the last time is that on defense, we'll fight your kids is doing much better in terms of pressing that offense with Mataro at the full screen range. It's about the strings after the fact, trying to find the hits that lead to that big damage. We do see a lot of highs coming out here that do get interrupted by El Kukui. We'll fight your kids kind of uncertain about that next approach it looks like here. We do get that one teleport opportunity, which is great, right? That ended up getting you a punish opportunity against El Kukui. But trying to reach for a fatal blow without the guaranteed hit, we got to make sure we know what we're reaching for here. And switching to Shang Tsung, with Janet Cage, I see this working out great for you in the corner. Those, you don't even need to be in the corner. She's gonna carry over, right into the corner for you with your fireball setup here. We'll see. You really think so? I, I would never have thought Shang Tsung. I sometimes kind of forget that he's part of the roster, uh, especially considering with the way that he's a little bit tricky. But like you said, mm -hmm. you're gonna see uh, old man Shang right here, and then wake up with the armor move and already launching Kakui. I thought so. I'm sorry. I thought so because I was going to say, I feel like Old Man Shang is probably going to be very well synergized with Janet because she does have that pickup route right after the ground fireball there, the, the pillar fireballs. So that probably helps out a lot. We'll see. If that's too far, though. Yeah, we're going to have to use Breaker here. It is still a bit close to that Fatal Blow territory, but we are getting a bit of damage on El Kukui compared to before with the General Shao. So who knows, this could be the pick that uh, will fight your kids needed. But we are gonna get hit by that low, and then Janet's gonna clean it up with the first round to El Kukui. Like the ideas are there. And I think it's about cycling between the old form into young form, depending upon the range that you're at. You got that initial throw knockdown, so that's your young form opportunity to go for regular zoning. Save your Janet for combos like this. Oh, but too early. Ah, it's there. It's right there. I see it. We'll I believe in this. I do too, actually. I definitely see the vision that Will Fight the Kids is trying to go for here as El Kukui tries to establish, goes a little bit back and forth to open up Will. And then we're gonna see more damage here with the Janet Cage to come on top. 
It's gonna leave a little bit of damage afterwards, but again, that's auto to me. We're gonna really clean it up mm -hmm. here for El Kukui to go 2 0 right now against Will. I really hope that Will stays as Shang, though. I really do hope. I see that there was a lot more progress on this matchup versus the General Shao one. Yeah, it was uh, very. Yeah, the last and great call out, like, was still able to continue the combo despite missing Janet. And I think that's part of the old muscle memory here that you have still equipped with Shang that, all right, this is the route that I have to take, anyways. But if Janet gets it, then you can extend a little bit further. Opting for Liu Kang this time on the third pick. Going for Scorpion. So you're going for your comfort for one more time here in the final game against El Kakui. And this is the thing that we do see quite often with Will Fight Your Kids. We'll cycle through all three. Generally, you've seen on a winning set, like Will Fight, will stick with Xiao and run with that set here. But now that we're getting called out by El Kakui right now, we're worried about, I guess, trying to outzone El Kakui. You might not get that opportunity. And also pressure, too, right? I think mm -hmm. that's one big thing that I've noticed here is that there are two characters that have not as strong armor launchers, and then on top of that, also create a guessing game off of knockdown situations where I think we'll need that more than anything. But again, El Kukui is dishing out damage. That was almost 40% there, Zero. Yeah. get cleaned up right now. Just like I, I never got nerfed. Round two. Nice. You never did! We did. We did. Mm -hmm. they, they, we have less chip mm -hmm. on, on Storm Cell now. We, Was that we do the less... real nerf, though? Was that the real nerf to your power? I don't think so. Well, just gotta have some good people to handle me. I don't know what to do. Oh, we also see Will Fight Your Kids with the nice. Scorpion. Okay, yes. so we're gonna get some more damage as well with this setup. Yeah, it's an interesting team up because you do get the retreating spear, which I think helps Liu Kang a lot if you don't want to go for this pressure game. The overhead is also a big call out with the Hellfire pickup that we saw earlier. You gotta stop autopiloting these damage routes, though. Yes. This could be it here. Not gonna have enough bar. I'm gonna go for the teleport, though. It does have quite a bit of hits, and we got the bounce combo, and then we're able to take down Kakui in the second round. That was very fortunate for Will Fight Your Kids to get that overhead. The bounce really hurts. So it's act it was a really nice luck that came into play here. Absolutely. Like, I think that was more intended for, oh, El Kakui is blocking. We're gonna get this overhead to keep myself safe. And you saw that, oh, wow, nice up block there. You saw that hesitancy when we tried to follow up the back two, because we weren't expecting the hit. Full punish. Yeah, that's a full punish. Ooh, and the down two also gonna get fully punished here with Janet Cage to help keep the combo going. Not gonna have enough meter to actually finish out, but we do get the overhead to clean up shock, and El Kukui takes it. 3-0 against Will. Yeah, As uh, we would like to, and I think that he's like the perfect example of a tank character. It just doesn't do as much damage as you like, but it's still super dam uh, damaging and uh, scary. Absolutely, but also another scary character is Smoke. This vicious vapor cycle ooh, you're really up block, though. Uh, is terrifying to deal with, but the back three into uh, two is definitely going to be a easy up block for an opponent there if you catch them. Right, here we go. Like you mentioned, those vicious vapors. You want to try to challenge them, but be mindful of your challenges because those things can happen. Or your high is going to whiff. And we're going to get the back throw here from Tragic. But we have Striker to help out and keep the launch going. Yeah, this team up here for Havoc, of course, very classic here. We go for the armor from Sub Zero that does help with Gore Ball a little bit there. Will help out with Striker Grenade. Which is Vapor and nothing, so no threat here. I see where we wanted to get those sweeps, but we, this should be a good counter. And it is XO Snowman that's going to take the first round. Fight. We have that sub zero armor too uh, to help with the projectiles. Uh, although we do see XO like, being a little more closer and fighting up close way more. Yeah, you kind of just you try to contend against some of this neutral game. Of course, another up block here on the 4-3-2. And yeah, just tragic MS really trying to figure out where the pieces are in this neutral game. But the Haymaker shuts down the back two from tragic. 
Give him enough time to also uh, recover from the projectile. It's gonna be a back throw. And that should set up for a projectile again. And instead, no, we're gonna see X, uh, Tragic try to uh, continue to block some of these longer space range. That's another thing too about Havoc. His arms, those disjointed hitboxes help him so much in matchups like these. Yeah. Oh my goodness, trying to get a jump out there. A nice neutral jump doesn't get punished by Snowman. It was an attempt there. Back two does get blocked. Great defense from Snowman throughout the set. Calling out these vicious vapors, a quick down one and a throw. Up, so you don't have to worry about gore ball, but these vicious vapors not getting punished here. Thanks to the back throw. Oh, that was very dangerous there for Tragic. We're gonna go for the whip punish, but it is too slow on the startup. But Ooh. the back way to walk back and then successfully land the hit in. That's going to be a clean hit for Tragic. Yeah, that opener absolutely sending it all the way home because that will kill you know, Smoke being one of those characters that doesn't necessarily need cameo extension to get that full damage. Nice back to make this one count. Oh, this one's counting. For sure. This one's definitely counting. We get the freeze and we're going to get the invincibility set up as well. And it is just pure chaos here. Someone's going to have to use that. Ooh. Yeah, full send because we saw the gore ball start up. Four, four does work out. Our staggers, but these staggers are constantly getting interrupted by Snowman. Snowman is not being tied to any of this delay here from Tragic. Nice armor mm -hmm. down there too. Mm -hmm. Zero coming from the back. That is plus on those kicks. Using the vicious vapors. A bit of a throw tech here, I think. We're down one check from uh, Exo Snowman. He's going to be able to bring up projectiles. Tragic, though, has to be careful because it can be one to two hits in, depending on how the hit confirm goes. We do have to attempt to mix up. It's not going to work out. I think that was just the down back four teleport right after we reappear with down back two. And the staggers does work out. Stagger into low from Tragic MS. Time and time again against Snowman. And it ended up working out there. Slowly chipping away at the opponent because honestly throughout the set we did see a lot of great defense on the uh shin shatter the four three and a two which is that uh low into overhead there that we saw up blocked a handful of times we saw great defense on vicious vapor and snowman does have knowledge of when to interrupt here we, we saw that showcase throughout this entire first game and tragic really had to kind of pause for a moment for a lot of this set and that's why we saw those great delays i'm sure is because what do you do to open up an opponent that is not being opened up by traditional pressure from smoke? Yeah, and I was going to say that Exo Snowman, what we just saw there, especially towards the end of that round, is that's when you're kind of scared to press on smoke. The, the stagger pressure into the vicious vapors, and then you're just like, uh, I know I should be challenging, but I'm I'm literally filled with fear. Not too sure how to like actually challenge in this situation the best way possible. So let's see if there are <laughs> That was an interesting way to avoid the kicks here. Yeah, I think you have a little bit of extra courage in this matchup in particular because of how many armor opportunities Havoc has in general. So if we start pressuring early enough, we do go for our spin cycle, armor through, and just bully smoke. We're trying to delay pressure. But we haven't seen that too much from Snowman here so far. Lots of great follow-ups though off of Gore Ball. And we did kind of see this type of pressure, but that whiff grab was getting just a little too readable on the grabs. So we're going to get the invincibility set up. There it is, that armor again, that delay pressure will absolutely get called out by the armor. Rip the arm off, keep following through. Nice. Actually, very good grenade there from Snowman. That second, I believe that second move on that shrink is the overhead, so you don't want to cut crouching. But again, invincibility setup. We're going to use Breaker very early in this match to try to get out of the corner and kind of, almost, I would say, brawl their way out. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that is the Havoc way. Do you have grenades to cover us just in case it was blocked? We already got the hit, so we're good. Mm, oh, no. Unfortunate, because it was a quick wake up there from Snowman, but Tragic has already sent it. Tries to call out the startup here, but down back to armor saves the day for Tragic. Tragic, I'm gonna try to summon out Sub-Zero once again. 
against the grenade pressure very patiently. Does get opened up by, I believe, the back three from the mistaken, so this is a combo. And we're still gonna get the second invincibility set up as well, plus the grab. And that is just disgusting smoke gameplay. You love to see it. You know, I'm, I'm seeing too much of this good smoke gameplay. It makes me want to go back, but uh, y'all can't get me. I'm not going to let it happen. <laughs> so, you're, you're saying that they're outplaying, like like you mentioned, smoke players trying to outplay here and use uh, opportunities. I, I see easier. I see uh, the they got to. Push. They're working real hard out here, that's for sure. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh no, the projectile was still in active hitbox range, so as soon as Exo Snowman was able to, uh, Tragic was getting hit within the Vicious Vapors. The down one check to avoid the grab on startup. Flawless blocking, try to respond, but Exo Snowman backed up just a little bit to get the hit in. And now we're gonna get another full command throw. Plus frames. This is gonna be fully punished for a launcher thanks to the projectile, and then we're gonna get the full game maker. I think that was supposed to be grenades there from uh, Ex Exo Snowman, but I got the baton instead. Of the armor, but great opportunity there for Tragic to get the full stop. Down the last breath, so the next touch will get the game there. Snowman coming out on top with that one. Tied it all up. I think if uh, Tragic got one slight hit in, that would probably have been a very dangerous position there for Exo Snowman, but. Like you mentioned, tied one to one right now between the two. The havoc is working. It's definitely doing what it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I think there's just these moments where you're seeing um, either Exo Snowman just being a little too hesitant, or even Tragic trying to be a little too aggressive, that it's costing them games in manners of like, oh, I think I got the hidden, but wait, my my move didn't reach or my move didn't land. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I wonder because it is the interaction between these two is just so scary. Even like with all the delays that Tragic is really putting out here, we do get the sector pick, and this one's going to be scary because it's going to make that delay play uh, much more potent here because you're going to get missiles. Yeah, whoa, relax on the vicious vapor. You lost the missile opportunity there. Ability setup that's gonna be keeping Exo Snowman on their toes. We're gonna just teleport away, avoid the entire uh, uh, projectiles in that moment. But we do get hit by the overhead baton. Again, the down three checks to try to open up Exo Snowman, accomplishing that very thing. Sector missiles go out, so you cannot press or even challenge. Yeah, the yeah. adding the extra delay of sector missile while invisible is all the more terrifying to deal with because you're guessing a high low opportunity that you can't see. You don't have to worry about the high low from the missile. It's about the hit that is coming from the missile that you're trying to block. You can't try to challenge smoke, so you're trying because of the missile. So you're trying to at least defend what you can't see, and that's even worse. Yeah, this this sector missile is it's, it's, uh, is exactly doing what you're mentioning. That delay it creates this opportunity for Exo Snowman uh, to actually be thoughtful on where they're pressing. Because just like that, Tragic's just able to open up Snowman and really capitalize on damage too. Because again, Smoke is also doing big heavy duty damage. Oh Sorry, Gold Ball Carry. Let's go for the Crash Bandicoot in the corner. Oh, started high. That that's actually interruptible by tragic there. If we would have went with the down one. Great Oof. counter hit here from Snowman. He's not gonna be able to kill here, but it does set up a nice mid screen into the grenade throws. So now we got that stagger into the back throw. That should be able to finish out the job. No, ten points oh, no. still. Oh no! Ooh. You know what that was supposed to be? It was supposed to be this route into fatal blow. We got the regular finisher here with the air karambit. Nice stuff. Smoke is deadly when just so close to like both endgame and the fact that again, vicious vapors and invincibility. Sector, again, big cameo change. I think this is probably the best change that Tragic 
could have done. Uh, I know we usually say, hey, go Sub-Zero when you're dealing with a character that uh, does a lot of projectiles, but truthfully, between the grenades and the gore balls, like, Snowman is setting up pressure thanks to those projectiles. You're better off trying to go for a opportunity to just play some defense and then summon out Sector to open up your opponent. Yeah, it, Smoke is one of those characters that can just be slotted with any cameo and do fine. It's the, the combo routing that's really going to determine how you play against your opponent. It, whether you go for bigger damage or you go for consistent invisibility reset, which we see a lot from Tragic. Honestly, we see that a lot from Smoke players. They sacrifice the bigger damage for the guaranteed invisibility setup, which is fine because you're opening up the opponent more, but you do have to open up that much more than what Snowman would have to if we could even get a hit out of this blunder situation because it'll be missile right after this. Oh, unfortunately the kick did open up a little bit for Tragic, but the sector missile came out a bit to allow uh Tragic to not get too much damage on. We got the invincibility set up once again. You're gonna have to hold all of this pressure, but Snowman finally challenges then be able to freeze and set up to get the Haymaker as the ender. Use the gore ball. Kept you blocking. Try to go for down one, but lost the turn because of it. So now, another teleport set up there, and that's the threat. Down back four should have been punished here. And honestly, Snowman could have done a down one, even a full sweep there for the punish. Actually, sweep might might be a little bit too slow on that one. I'd have to double check. But either way, like that is a punish opportunity here. Even down two, that could get tragic away from you, and you still be able to block in time for the missile to come down. Fight. We also see that Snowman did choose the Sub-Zero, so took away the Striker grenades, which has been usually what has opened up for Snowman. And it said took on that Sub-Zero Ice Armor to deal with the Sector Missiles. That's just how potent that has been for Tragic, who's been able to open up every single time thanks to that. We're gonna get the back throw to try to put Tragic into the corner. And again, that low corner. Ooh! The anti-air, but no hit confirmed. Haymaker really kind of screwed things up there, but the down back four does find the mark. We don't go for another side swap right there. We do have plenty of meter to do it. We're already at 50% life lead for Tragic. Ooh, that is not good for Snowman, who's going to be able to try to get up out here and try to continue to fight for their life. They're going to put on the ice armor. And the down three check here from Tragic. Forward three, right in the vicious paper cancel. That was not an intentional taunt right there. We're going for the setup. We had stagger down inputs. Unfortunately, got taunt right in there. Oh, that's not good for tragic right now. That is not good. That's gonna lead into the fatal blow. That that blunder probably cost you this round right here. But you removed a fatal blow off the table from Exo Snowman. Oh, you're still living, living. Okay, yeah, so you got yeah. one more shot. Come back to. Oh! I definitely got mixed. Mixed. I definitely got mixed. The throw tech. Five points left. Five seconds on the clock as well. We got the teleport. And the brutal to fully seal the deal for Tragic. Worked out well with some setups and <laughs> really potent damage. Okay. It'll be... I don't... I want to see it. I, I want to see it because in my head, it's not working out like it, it did with Shang Tsung. Here. I can't see the vision that is Katana and Janet quite yet, but Illy, I'm sure, has something up their sleeve. Right, we do have to start her with that quick double me. Nice. And there you go. That Your answer has okay, been... Okay. Or your question has been answered, uh, Zero. That is exactly what makes a little bit or just a sneak pick peek at what makes this very matchup dangerous. We also are seeing the same thing from Dark to Goat. Like, we are going to be looking at a 35 to 40% damage combos from both of these players and the, their respective characters. Mm. Yeah, there he is. Oh, the oh, teleport. Oh, we have to... I, was that was that a trap all along? Did you did you know? Illy Silly, did you know? I don't oh my think God. Illy Silly realized that would have worked. I thought I honestly thought that the setup. No, stop, Illy Silly, stop! Oh my gosh, continuing to do so with such a slow startup and the goat just gets hit by it. This is crazy.
crazy. Okay, all right. I also do, to go back to this Janet synergy here with Katana, I do like that we do have that corner carry. Uh, that is so critical for her, so you can still uh, cover the space against Melina, give her less room to run away with, still get these low frame traps here. I'm sorry, frame traps, fan traps, excuse me. <laughs> I guess this kind of is a frame trap in a way. Kinda is. I already got the mid check, and it's gonna also launch as well. I'm gonna be able to get uh, not the last hit of the up of uh, the overhead, but it still works. Interesting call out with the jump as well. It's gonna come in Janet, and then get a breaker after the teleport. So not only silly is gonna go ahead and try to set up again, but this time Dark the Goat not gonna be getting hit by it thanks to that uh, upper uh, sorry that launcher teleport. Did not want to be fooled twice for that scenario. Just kind of kept grounded, but falls into this one. Really silly. Really excellent route here. Oh, unfortunately, that was too much of a slow knockdown for uh, Illy Silly to actually set up that frame trap. I am loving these traps, though. Like, they have been phenomenal, despite being so in your face against the Dark the Goat. Doesn't miss on the last hit. We're gonna see a little bit of projectiles go out here from Ellie Silly. And just to stand in front of you and then grab for a back throw. Throw here. Ellie Silly with a strong life lead. Just needs a single touch to finish it off. Try to sneak in that back four, but quick Melina ball into the sky with a fatal blow. Immediate break. Fortunate for Ellie Silly. Interesting was not going to be able to use Breaker whatsoever because it was just the start of the string. So, Illy Silly showing off this katana and the Janet Cage. Very much a good job here for taking that first game. Yeah, I, wow. Okay, all right. So, we have corner carry and obviously additional combo extension because of that. You know, even if you don't get that corner carry. Great trap setups here from Illy Silly. Okay. Katana. Interesting. Our katana locked in. We'll see what Dark the Goat goes with. I don't think Dark the Goat plays any other character but Melina. And again, I like that, like, you do see that right now, the way that they're both using Janet Cage is very similar. Uh, it's that corner carry. For Dark the Goat, it's actually using a special move like the low size to then catch and almost like treat it as a launcher to then mm. continue the combo. So that's in respect of for Dark the Goat really good uh, because that is more damage that doesn't get left on the table. Um, we haven't really seen any setups with, with Janet, but we have seen these setups from Illy Silly's uh, frame, um, low wind toss that's um, on the field as a trap. Yeah. And I think that that has been a huge factor here where I'm curious if Dark the Goat is going to be able to, as you can see, like dashing in and actually blocking more so than ever to be able to catch those uh, those traps. Yeah, it is a rundown game here for Dark the Goat right now. I'm trying to make Illy Silly lose as much ground before they start doing this here. We keep trying to faint out on some of these interactions here goes low ball does get a great combo to start things off oh no i think that was a jump start up there mm. you have to be very careful you need to be able to get out of that fan in order to not get hit by it if you try to take your turn so we do have the setup now the grab does get with because of the delayed knockdown or the delay wake up but again at least silly this is all pressure that belongs in their favor He's nice. Oh, what a duck though from Dark the Goat. And yeah, just immediate break from Illy Silly. Wants to maintain this life lead. Staggers and just try to get the nut punch here from Janet. Not gonna work out. It's still technically your turn when she does that too, is the crazy thing. And that's one of those things where it's like, once again, you have to be very careful. A good block on that low side. It's also going to be a full punish. On top of the fact that that's also going to leave uh, a, a, the frame trap set up. But good block here from Dark the Goat. Unfortunately, that uh, trap setup was mistimed. Oh, we got it! We there have it is. to get it up! And that is a full combo already going for it. That is going to be all of the bar <laughs> news here from Dark the Goat. You know what? For me, 
Dark the Goat won that game. Is that right? right just For me, a that single... was a win. <laughs> it's interesting though, we only got, what was it? It ended up being 287 for that corner route in particular. So, I mean, granted, you still got the combo with, with Janet, which is awesome. So I'm curious to see if we had the full route opportunity starting from the very beginning, right? For the mid screen that did get that full carry. Or even just grounded in general. Maybe we were just low on Melina Bar. But at the end of the day, that bird of prey started. Nice low duck. Nine cent. Yeah. Some extra chip, and then we're gonna see Illy Silly try to get out and get hit by the chip one. That is a full ah. long two, which was gonna be able to get extra damage. But this time, Illy Silly takes it, and that's gonna shift me into. No, we're gonna actually play it safe here. I could have sworn that could have been an easy into fatal, but hey, Illy Silly <laughs> still able to clean it up towards the end thanks to that bullet throw. Nice little turnaround right there. I feel like the, the gears are starting to set into place here for Dark the Goat. Or, you know, we are trying to figure out this pacing that is Illy Silly with Janet, but not quite making the cut here to get it over the finish line. Yeah, and as someone that pointed out in the chat, so I, this is, again, uh, less than, what, 24 hours of Janet Cage? Yes. Um, you know, uh, that actually came from a throw, Zero. So 20%. From a throw is still incredibly good uh, for usually what you would get off a throw is like 110, I believe, yes. with Janet right now. So, yeah. Okay, no, 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 no. That, that, that makes a lot more sense. I missed the throw. I looked over for a second and missed the throw. So thank you for the clarity there. Yeah, so 28% <laughs> off a throw is actually pretty big, yeah. Janet K. Wuxi Academy. Your subjects can't see this side well. of you. Lots of versatility here. 140 off a regular throw. That's a, <laughs> it's super good. Like, that's the scary part, honestly, about characters that they can combo off of throws like that. Is uh, those situations there that make it very, very scary. Because now you're just not dealing with like, oh, I got thrown. I'm going to just guess on the knockdown. No, you're eating a lot of damage that you normally wouldn't. And that's yeah. just going to be like... A tumbleweed, but honestly, at least Ellie's been like super cool and calm and collected these last few games. Nice. We do have that trap set up one more time and utilizing it as a full stop sign against Dark to go. So, no forward approach, no teleport opportunity once we sit right on top of the fan trap. Nice throw. Oh, that is not good for Dark to go. Uh, I don't think we'll see a breaker here because of how close it is to uh, the end of the health bar. And yeah, it's exactly like that. We're gonna actually see the breaker happen now instead. So hopefully we get that one single hit, but some of these staggers, that's gonna be in the favor of Illy Silly and already on potential set point. Round two. Fight. Ooh, but the Bird of Prey returning the favor here. Silly Silly trying to jump out. You're just swinging on both sides. Goodness gracious. Oh, wow. Sonic Fox with the raid. Greatly appreciated. Oh, we took out Janet. So that is going to put her on a pause cooldown. Her recharge rate is pretty slow. And there you have it. Dark the Goat taking the second round. Still potential set point for Illy Silly. Fight. She's, yeah, I thought we were gonna get the hit low side, and then that would have picked up with Janet. I don't think we get too much off that. Maybe you get the teleport in time, or naturally, because it'd be the double pick up there. Bit of a sweep. Gonna continue the string. Not gonna get the full overhead. Just gonna get that slight hit. We're gonna also use Breaker early, which is a smart decision. And he <laughs> started to go. Went for the stand one. That was gonna be a whiff punish. And Illy Silly with the dash up throw, forward throw. Once again, launch! You're not blocking Dark the Goat! Stagger. Oh, that was very scary. <laughs> was able to duck the first hit from Dark the Goat. Got the Janet follow up and the finish. Illy Silly will take it. Oh, over Dark the Goat. Zero, can I tell you why I love that sequence right there? One day, they'll. Exp 
explore outside of their comfort zone, right? And I'm sure they have, honestly. But the consistency of Lao Hat is just so strong. Like, you, how do you turn that down? All right, nice air to air. We'll see if we get the pickup and overextend it there with the 4-1. I like the backup uh, backing away to avoid the Kung Lao hat. There's also that teleport to just go underneath the float and the mid size to check uh, Ivy Hosey right there. Just there's a 4 of 1, but no follow up there. We're caught floating and yo, just come right back in for the quick overhead, blessing the dome. Forward grab here from Ivy Hosey. And I love these mid checks. We're gonna get a throw tech from Hourglass of Rain. I'm trying to have to Ooh. try to land a hit, but because went for the command grab, that's why they got hit there. Another Kung Lao hat is gonna try to hold on to it as that recharge rate is gonna be very high. Mid check. We have to be careful here. Cannot get chipped out. There is no last breath available. Mm -hmm. Hourglass still trying to chase down Hazi. Be very cautious. There's the dive kick. No follow through, but honestly, the throw. Helping to add things up a little bit here for Hourglass. One touch is all that Hazi needs, but the wheel no, didn't finish it. The down one was supposed to get the pickup, but we do have the dive kick. Round two. Man, we're already starting off like this, Zero. Already starting off in this first game between these two, and the clutch factor that our glass of rain just has is incredible. Yeah, no kidding. Like, how did you get the the oper the split second decision to go for ball roll the moment that that Hazi decided to go for float there? Tries another float, doesn't find the mark, but four one to keep the pressure going. We do get that down three. A great awareness as well from the Hourglass, who is not letting those overheads, or rather those poke into overheads, catch them off guard already with the first game in the books. The second round was definitely a really strong testament of Hourglass's uh, gameplay and, and situational awareness. But mm -hmm. Ivy Hosey just, you know, I definitely see that they're looking to find the openings and realizing, okay, there's a little bit of more layers that we're going to have to peel back here and really figure out. Absolutely. Sindel, <laughs> Melina, okay. Back into the Melina play. Hanging guns. It's dreadful that Tarkat has hold. I love also the I skin T Zero. Uh, this is probably one of Melina's best skins. Uh, just with the the whole elegance that Dark Alliance like mm, Chef's kiss. I'm just thinking some sort of like plant monster you know like I, I just hit the plant dungeon or some sort of grass dungeon and i don't know any jrpg that's kind of what i'm seeing here poison ivy looking fit i dig it i see more of like dark magic but yeah, yeah i can see what you mean i can see what you mean i, I see i see what you're cooking there zero okay. oh my god that yep. ball will, again it's the high risk calculating you you know how much value you get and you know how much value you don't get if you try to uh if that ball roll gets blocked and again with yeah. Kung wild hat it's also just a great opening like, and like look at this jump in that was just so clean because you know you're worried about that low and then you're gonna try to block that low hat very very close and it's, it just doesn't work out yeah I do want to call out that it seems like we are conditioning some of that movement there because Hourglass went for that jump in while we had low hat and Hazi just was paying attention to Molina specifically, not the entirety of the field, the threat that is Kung Lao hat. Nice. Got the forward throw, but unfortunately, Kung Lao was not recovered yet. It was a stream that uh, I think we really needed. Now we do get it again this time thanks to that block uh, from... Oh, Again, cartwheel after cartwheel. The lay float, then get the to jump in. See that micro dash though to really kind of close out that space, and it gave a full stop to Hazi, not allowing them to go for another back dash because we might get uh, load on the back dash startup. So just for catch. Good and hourglass two zero. The mix too from the strings. Notice that uh, hourglass actually completed the string thanks to I believe it's the back. 
two or back three. Usually we don't see Hourglass finish out that string, but because there is that waiting period for the Kung Lao hat, plus on top of that, we had also the mid that goes into the low, immediately going into Kung Lao hat once uh, that second hit actually reaches to Ivy. And then from both of that, just completing those strings based simply off of the auto mix that's in them um, shows that Hourglass of Rain is definitely in Ivy's head right now. Dignity, Melina. Always. Dignity. Yeah, absolutely. That That is certainly out of the field here against Hazi. So hopefully get a little bit of a fight back there. It, it is a lot of full screen set up. We do have, honestly, a lot of great callouts in neutral, but I do like, again, the explosivity that Hourglass has off of every flow from Hazi. This time around, Hazi going to get that grab pretty early on. Does respect the hat this time around. Doesn't forget about it. And that's going to be a hard knockdown into a safe jump. Just in case, jumping with the jump one. Kung Lao had again off of the mid string. The grab does whiff though was a little too close. Not enough to actually catch. So Ivy's gonna be able to get a full hit confirmed. And we're gonna be able to get the jump in. Now not the cleanest jump in off of that setup, but it was still a setup regardless. And we're gonna be able to back away and fully whiff punish Hourglass, choosing to use Breaker right now. Okay, got the stay of one, anti-air, big pickup opportunity, immediate spend for this fatal blow. We don't want to let Hazi get too close to that combo breaker in this route here, and we're definitely going to catch up on health. Yeah, it, it's still a factor of Hourglass is pressing the issue off of every single float that Hazi makes. With those forward advancing normals, very scary spot to be. Not even get an anti-air, we floated up a uh, up block opportunity from Hourglass here, but... Hazi did not capitalize on the recovery of it. Yeah, I think the I think the float is actually what kind of tripped Ivy up here in, uh, in that moment. Oh, if you get the landing, and then there goes screen. Set up. Too far. We've seen you try that one before. This time around, it probably would have worked because Hourglass is already low blocking. Oh, nice. Ooh. Call out. actually choosing to hold all of the damage and the micro duck mm -hmm. to be able to pull out the grab and this is gonna be good damage for the team wow setup and then we get the last hit in but the breaker from ivy to try to stay alive right now again this is potential set point here for hourglass who is looking super solid in this bracket tonight jumping back just in case trying to call out any movement that Ivy's trying to do from now how it goes. And we have the amped ball roll from the air. Wait, did... Hold on. It slowed down for a second there. Chat, bear with me. We'll get to analysis after this very... Gosh, because when you spend meter on gunshot, you get that restand opportunity so that you can still follow up. As long as you get the... It's the second bullet has to hit on the meter version to get that ground restand you still get another follow-up there so that's big opportunity but red nose picking johnny cage with chameleon silent is now on breako here with trevor i feel lied to by both of these players right now zero i'm a, I'm a little bit i'm a little bit angry but it's all good yeah the the tremor which is common for the reiko uh, meta right now and then uh chameleon and johnny from red nose oh geez um uh, maybe thought there was enough room there for a side swap Got at least the follow-up. You do have Melina if you want to summon her. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Alright, an empty jump. Flawless blocking the second punch. And we got the Jade Razor Ring. And that's going to be an easy hit confirm for all the damage. Plus the charge up on Star Power. Now that's the second act. Right. And that's all the power that we need. It's just Star Power. We run a whole city block. Oh, no! That was a great block there from Silence. Calling out that that is a double overhead. Tries to get the grab, but it was too slow. Plus Tremor whipping and getting hit at the same time as well. Now the fan lift though, doesn't necessarily help with the extension, but hey, we got that forward throw. Absolutely. Oh, and another one here. Stacker pressure back into this corner. And look how long it's taken Tremor to come back. We just got Tremor back after that sweep against Tremor there, trying to extend combo against Silent, or against Red Nose, rather. Nice pickup. Do have the hype mode ready to roll. 
goes that high low, like you said. Not gonna choose to go into the double uppercut. Instead, we're gonna get the Molina ball roll, and that is all. Rendo should right here actually didn't go for any trip out situation. And it's gonna leave space to accompany here, but we do get the Johnny kick for the brutal. Brutality. I mean, a much bigger mob. Why why did hold on? Rico's likes it's like the family guy. The family yeah. guy po <laughs> It's real! Just fell down the stairs and their legs are just like all over the place. Oh my god! Oh no. I, I'm curious if Red Nose was just trying to get the Brutal, um, because I feel like with uh, Hype modes activated, that should have been uh, chip damage, if anything, if Silence did block at the end. So I wonder if it was just like trying to fancy uh, towards the end, or maybe that they like they thought that that wasn't wasn't enough. But I mean, regardless, it Renos did win the game. It's just something to keep an eye out because we did see a lot of space given to Silence that could have ended really bad for Red Nose, like this right now with the overhead getting fully whiffed and Red Nose waking up and getting all the punches. <gasps> Okay, well, Molina coming through here. Nice assist, Red Nose. Full corner carry, one more time. The safe jump too. What an interrupt, excuse you. No Jade Razor Rank for Red Nose today. Oh, the up block, very nicely done here from Silence Return. That should net the kill in. Yeah, make sure we get closer to the corner with that route. Good call here from Silent. Oh, nice chase mm. down here from Silent there. Good awareness on which cameo assist was coming out. But this time, side swap does work out here for Red Nose. Got the jump three to get the punish back against Silent Return. This movement from Red Nose is really keeping Silent Return on their feet. And now launched fully for the corner carry. And we're going to be able to get the hard knockdown. Didn't exactly get the jump kick that they wanted to continue the combo, but they do get the spacing right. It's going to be full on damage control. Goes for the nut punch. Jump one into the forward grab. Oh, no. Yeah, very media start up there. Got the overhead. Big couple drop there. Jump in, and a great pickup. Honestly, you're so close to the corner with the shadow kick to charge up on hype meter. Final round. Fight. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's going to be hard to counter zone against Reiko. The startup, even for somebody who also has a fireball, is usually kind of losing out the startup from Reiko's shuriken. Hmm, that with grab. We can get punished, though, but we do get the hype act mode activated. See if we see Red Nose go for some of the crazy stuff. Yep, there we go. Oh we got my god. Punch. Keeping it safe. Catching you trying to take back your turn. Didn't get as much value, but we do get the throw punish due to Silence trying to go for the up block. Low, too far away. Ooh. Nice duck opportunity. My god. Yo, they're both fighting for this corner. Not able to guess on these tech throw opportunities. There's one more throw. Going for the backside with Katana to get the extension, but immediate breaker from Silent. Yeah, in that moment, I definitely would have uh, wanted to see a just the full back throw because that is uh, was we're now back in like this full screen range where you're gonna have to bring either the corner carry to play or punish here, which should do the trick here for Red Nose. If we can get the full combo, not gonna get the Melina size, but we should be able to try to survive here. But we got Silence Return. He's gonna be able to continue. No! Oh, oh no! Oh. Calls out the Johnny kick and everything! Very good for Silence Return. The awareness, the presence of mind, being able to call out on defense against Red Nose's offense, and following with the $10 contribution to the match, Reno. Thank you so very much. Silence almost uh, dropped that because that could have also been an attempt to try to do like I think available at that ender But what a great call out um, with the duck waiting patiently for the Johnny kick 
Especially with how quick sometimes Johnny kicks are. That was like really good patience here from Sam. Yeah, don't think you can totally Absolutely. I mean, being able to navigate the space without having to block right as far as, you know, ducking some of these normals, having the awareness on both sides has been tremendous here. Both players really fighting strong defensively. Even though Red Nose can be very overwhelming with Johnny, Silent is still finding these openings. Still finding opportunities to get this dunk with Tremor already locked and loaded here. So next throw will be that route that we're all aware of Rekko being able to pull off here. Dunk. Just a little bit goes for the Katana fan, but now was a little too far. So it does get hit by the kick, but he uses Breaker, but again, Silence having to uh, actually use Rake, uh, Tremor's difference variation. Uh, to get to the right one so that we can actually convert quickly. You do see a couple back fours there from Silence Return. That's to try to call out some of the shadow kick opportunities. Those are possibilities that you can still call out. Uh, chameleon assist, but with Melina on the playing field, it's a little more caution. Nice block, no punish there from the roll. Back throw. Good block on the shurikens. We do get the low end. Because there's a little bit of pit stun, we're gonna get the forward grab. We're gonna do an empty jump into another forward grab. And then now mid check. And oh my gosh, you went for the parry, but the low sweep is what's gonna catch you off your feet. I, I just had this funny thought that both of them try to parry at the exact same time. Just be, you know, a waste of parry interaction. Just be funny. Be great minds think alike there. Another Sure, I can set up here just to load up Trevor one more time. Can still cause pressure on the approach here from Red Nose. Taggers. Lots of respect from Red or from Silence. Very interesting. And with the parry. Mm -hmm. Red Nose being a little more aggressive, trying to call out. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh so that. Nice. That was insanely unfortunate. Tried to get the the air time there it would have avoided the throw but too little too late silent takes it what seemed like a dominant performance here from red nose at the beginning it's been silence who's been on top of the game plan uh, especially with some of these interactions again i think those parries were such a strange call when you have those sweeps and you're not really seeing um you're not really seeing mid or highs as a response to pokes um or to strings right you've been yeah. really seeing more of like these sweeps the projectiles and then whatnot but we're gonna switch over to the kenshi with the sub zero from red nose and let's see if this is where like you know we want to try to we wanted to try out with the johnny i think the johnny was working out but something is not clicking in this matchup for red nose and this is why we're gonna see that kenshi I wonder if it's one the zone that you gotta deal with. And that's a little bit difficult for Johnny here. You could go sub zero route to go for the armor up, but then you kind of sacrifice some of that pressure that makes Johnny so scary to deal with in the close range by doing that. Overhead. Oh my god, Silent might have Red Nose's number here though. This is getting really spicy right now for Silent. That's gonna be a full punish because of that overhead completely whipping. We're gonna see a breaker so late in the game from Red Nose. This could be the win condition though, as you're gonna bring out Sento. See here. Yeah, early break or breaker at this point is usually just a death sentence to guarantee you're not getting a breaker in the next round. But Red Nose feeling very confident here. It might have been like a mental relapse just for a moment there, just like hey. I'm a little bit overwhelmed right now. Like my character I was using previously not working so hot. And I got the late break, but Silent seems to be, uh, you know, caught on the back foot against Red Nose. They were making a strong comeback until, unfortunately, dropping the fatal blow, giving a round to Silent there. I, 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 my face was like, oh, okay, this is Kenshi face. But then that drop is not what Red Nose needed, mm -hmm. and that was all the Sento here for Silent. But we should be able to see the Sento come out, and we do. Now it's just trying to play defense once again against Red Nose. A lot of flawless blocks, a lot of good defense, and calling out on these lows. Slight hits here and there. We're gonna see the armor slide and actually side switch. And because of the meter for Sento so low, Sento goes away, and it's just Kenshi and the sword. A little pop there. 
Okay, let's go for sweep. Slowly building up that cameo gauge, even with the sword out. Sword stance is activated. There's that break. Such a lead for Silas Return. Got the dunk. That shuriken speed. That was a hit, but not confident in the hit confirmed. An nice. anti air and beautifully done for the Silence Return to go into the brutal. Excellent stand one right there from Silence Return. Whatever kryptonite I'm surprised at this matchup completely, me. actually, between these two. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, you'll call me in a moment, wait him. a minute. I'm actually going to see Omni-Man show up right now. It's been a minute. Omni-Man, great damage output. Also being followed up with uh, Chameleon. There's so much opportunity off of his round to guarantee that 380 damage range to push yourself into 400. Omni-Man does have that big opportunity, but a big block here on the Viltrumite stance. Viltrumite 4, I believe, for the uppercut. Okay, the back throw, and then we're going to use that Katana fan with keep it going. Safe jump once again. That's going to be an amped up force field. I love I the intent of, of still going for the aerial dart because Omni Man's always going to block. Like, just avoid it. You have to respect the, the Viltrumite stance, but you do have that massive life. So there's no need to put yourself into danger. Oh! What a hit! The two darts actually catching uh, Silence Return in the Viltrumite stance on the startup, rather. Tried to also play patiently on the launcher, but this is going to do some damage. Should have force fielded, honestly. Just activate it while you're about to get ran into it. Stop screaming. Say force. Nice torpedo. What an empty pickup. Yeah. Gosh, and the block on the vulture, my stand. Also taking out Katana. It's not going to be a clean hit confirmed, though. Eagerly goes out. Force field. Mm. There goes the breaker. Not going to block that Molina ball roll. This. This feels like such a brawler style match that I'm like, <laughs> I'm just kind of like, bro, if this was an HBO show, this is exactly how this matchup would have gone. Oh, uh, oh, geez. <laughs> I mean, I like Peacemaker, but I don't know about all that. Like, <laughs> he would have to have force field on all the time. This dude's getting cooked up. Nice jump in though. Into the fatal blow this time and better connect here. Good job. But yeah, you're totally right. Like this is uh, an HBO show in the making right here. A depowered Omni Man. Booyah. Uh, I feel like this is, this has to be featured in like those uh, death uh, death rap battles. Is that is that what it is that what those are? The epic no. rap battles of history or? No, I, I just here, I, I might have been mixing them the two, but it's like death battles. There's death battle, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's death battles, right? Like, yeah, yeah, who's the strongest out of both? And right now it's looking like it's Peacemaker against the Vulture Mite, who has a family. Oh my gosh. Um, who, who, what? All right, hold on. Peacemaker. <laughs> 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 wait. Oh, top siete. Gracias por el raid. Bienvenidos toda la gente de top siete. Y gracias por la tu comunidad uh, trusting with us, your family. Thank you so much. La familia. Thank you for the raid. I, I don't, I'm not smart and I don't know Spanish. But I appreciate your raid. The Spanish came out so naturally. And I'm like, yo, I'm out of my element right now. I'll, I'll leave if I need to. <laughs> oh, and that's an anti air right there from Silas to Ted, who's gonna get the <laughs> Oh my goodness, nice that butt. Ooh, yeah. very nice Vulture Mike stance. And I like that there was no follow up either. Just keep on this full screen. But not that launcher that is going to be very dangerous and dangerous for El Kukui who whipped on that second string. Mm -hmm. All right, air route for sure. Nice pickup to get the reach up. I mean, the versatility of this pairing with Chameleon and Omni Man, she's so huge. All right, you're already in Viltrumite stance because there's nothing that can threaten you from that range that Peacemaker has. We did see the double air dart kind of help out, but. 
at that point, El Kakui unfortunately is down at a life deficit right now, so we do need to try to make something happen. A single shot takes out Chameleon. Oh no! No I was meter! Say, Silence needs to be a little more patient here. Cannot be throwing out that stuff while Force Field is in effect. If there's no opportunity like this one right now, but Kakui drops the kick and the ball roll lands right there. And Silence up a round right now. Does he go around the world or does he just make a quick circle in the sky to land right back where he was? You know, I wondered that about Flash too in Injustice. He's like, I went around the world, but no, you went up the street. And then came back. I don't know. Based on the, the CW show, this is pretty, pretty fast. <laughs> I don't know, fam. Okay, maybe maybe the Flash doesn't go around. Oh, oh no, punish on Eagly. Nice. Silence fighting back with Omni Man, tying it up one to one. Omni Man wins. Yeah, I honestly just watching this matchup is so fascinating because Silent has the right decision as Omni Man to go into Viltrumite stance. There's not a whole lot that Peacemaker can do at full screen to go toe to toe against Omni Man without setting up you know closely with either jade we saw to kind of get those interrupts or even the double darts that helped a lot um to kind of call out the recovery of the viltrumite stance but it's fascinating it didn't just follow through i wonder if it's because we canceled out of stance maybe to go for viltrumite stance four should be that upper cup too late to save the day you dickhead i think one thing that silence did that was really like good for the second round was the fact that uh once the force field went up let's stop throwing out projectiles let's let's actually just play a little bit of defense here mm -hmm. especially with such a strong life lead because uh, it shows that el kakui is messing up on certain things now easily still on cooldown goes the mid easily we're gonna just duck the shots Let's play patient here yeah play the full screen just dodge we do have a life lead this time tries to go for down one on the teleport Unfortunately, a little bit too far away with Silent being able to open up. Nice anti-air. Good set up here. Good to see. It's the counter hit. <gasps> oh no. Bit of a grab. Trying to like play it slow. Delay on a couple of hits. Be a punish here though. Ooh. That's not good for silence and El Kakui taking the first round. Round two. Fight. Yeah, we could block that, but because Katana came through, that was gonna give quick recovery for Silent. But already chased it down. Did El Kakui another torpedo? Go ahead, take to the skies. Unfortunately, opened up their immediate break. Ooh, to block, and that's gonna be a punish here for El Kakui. But no launcher to continue the uh, combo with Molina's size. I think we tried to go for a down three here, but it was just too slow against Silent's own strain. And it goes the loop to a dash. Yeah, it didn't go for the re-jump re route there. The block. Yeah, there's no chameleon assist there. We only have Katana. Bring out easily. Oh. Gunshot. Nice. I, I love it. Just a quick recovery. Nice. Oh, that should have been a full punish right there. Was it ready? Oh, boys. <laughs> Those darts, they reach so far, and it's a good preemptive call out from El Kakui. It's going to put him up 2 1 against Silence. Excuse me, big timers? Easy. Gee whiz playing video games here but uh yeah it's so interesting to see how someone reacts to options at full screen it, it was uh I, I love the tweet that eva slayer retweeted it was uh gsp talking about trying to fake people out Peacemaker. in oh, yeah. the neutral zone as it were for for uh mixed martial arts right where he, he kind of fakes out punches you see that in neutral like especially if you look at full screen scenarios where people are throwing out jabs you're trying to make the opponent react negatively for themselves so that you can create a better opportunity for yourself there and because your opponent is so tensed up at that full screen presence they tend to make wrong decisions and that jump because we reacted to the the fact that peacemaker moved it was supposed to be a jump over eagly but instead 
we jumped into the air dart here. And now we do have Silent going for the Reiko pick. This is an interesting pick against the Maker, especially with that force field. You know, I feel like it's one of those things where are you confident that you're going to be able to close in on those gaps and actually see where it, it works for El Um At least it does take Silent's return out of the air so the starts are not going to be as yeah. preemptive as we've seen before. And right now it's just been more mid-checks by Eagly and then holding on to block uh, four against the gunshots. It's This is going to be an interesting pick because out of these two, in, in terms of zoning, the Peacemaker definitely stands to win with Force Field here. And you do have that gunshot, right? The meter gunshot really helps. Nice chase down. Good awareness from Silent. Great interrupt. There goes the side. Oh, no. That that was the right routing. Just a little bit. Uh, it's hard to say exactly how it is. It's just Molina was already too far in the jump for that extension. There's the gunshot. Force field activated so we can avoid those shurikens. And 22 seconds on the clock. Counting down, it's about even between the two. Oh, we're just gonna go and grab! But the torpedo! Yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. I do like the down three there to try to duck under the shuriken. It does work out. Nice, eagerly set up. There goes the down oh. three. And that's gonna open up Elk, uh, Silence Return. There goes the force field. Again, using those gunshots. There's the mid checks from Eagly, the down one check oh. from Silence, and then gets the overhead plus. That was an into the Shuriken. But we have the grab. This is huge. This is great damage potential right now for El Kapui. Oh, one for six job. That's all right, though. We still got throw. Both doing scenario does trade out with Eagly. Let's get any follow up because it was the re retreating Eagle. with the fan lift. Oh, we have the lift. We have the launcher and then that was the ender for Eagle. We have the gunshots they landed and that's an easy torpedo potential set point here for El Kukui. Absolutely. Yeah, opting for a lot of counter zoning against Silent. Look, Eagle does save the day here, but no armor. Eagle's out. Doesn't get hit by the sheer thing. Okay. We have a little bit of a hit from the Razor Glaze, and then there goes uh, a little bit of strings. We have another gunshot. It's not going to actually land here against Silent. Down one. Yeah, goes for the anti-air. Nice pickup from Silent here. Still gets the corner carry. Yo. We have the man grab. Summer not quite set up yet. There it is. Ooh, what a good no. throw up there. And then we have the gunshots. Eagly launcher. We got the grab. Nice. There goes Molina ball roll. Force field. And we're back at full screen. That's a huge hopefully. And That's again. Understand. Breaker goes out from silence. Chip damage here. There's no bar. And we got the brutal from Torpedo. Brutality. Fantastic. Peacemaker. I love, I love this. And like uh, the overextension on silence is part, right? Yeah. But right now we're gonna hop into Hourglass versus Illy Silly. This is the match we've been waiting for, and we're gonna see Hourglass of Rain with the Melina pick, uh, Melina and Chameleon pick versus Illy Silly's Janet Cage and. Yeah, it's this uh, great routing that we saw here earlier. Great Janet Cage combo or Janet Cage, excuse me, up to 500 almost. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, that hurt a lot. And we have an already another launcher here from Illy Silly, who's gonna be able to get another Janet Cage. Oh my God. And I think it's gonna recover in time too for another Janet combo. Yep, here we go. Has to be so careful because that, that consistency from Illy Silly is just too on point right now. Immediate breaker and you've not escaped the corner quite yet. Go for the Jade, nice anti air. Hourglass getting that side swap. Beautiful stuff. Mm, let go of block a little bit too late after the stream. This will be another Janet Cage to continue the combo. Free setup. And more Katana fans go out. Purple is up at least. So I think that's Hourglass of Rain's strategy is to turn on purple. 
Oh, we have the auto jump, uh, auto ball roll, and then the instant air ball roll as well. Mid check tries to go for the grab, but Illy still attacks. Nice, got the low fan setup, sits right on top of it. Because you have to interact with this in a different way. Like, if you fall within the space of this fan and you haven't hit me, you're still going to get blown. Even if you do hit me, you're going to get blown up. All right, but this will absolutely blow up Illy Silly right now. Nice damage. I think this should kill because it's going to be, yeah, it's definitely killing. That is 50 damage. 50% damage right there, uh, zero. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Molina. That explosivity again from Molina. She she deserves it, honestly. Mm -hmm. oh. Ooh, I love the solve, right? Instead of putting yourself in danger with a teleport, Molina. It's all right. You do have a Molina that can take the hit for you. Mid check here from. Hourglass, but it's now Illy so who's just playing the distance game. Again, doesn't really have to overextend here. Can just play this full screen and force Hourglass of Rain to come in. I like that that breaker happened there instead of uh, so close. I'm gonna leave back again for Illy Silly to stay in this full screen range that uh, has been really comforting for them. We open up Hourglass of Rain. There goes Janet again for the damage. Another hit and another launcher. That's gonna be a free setup. Oh and, my god! To the brutal as well. After a whiff throw, we take a step back, and Illy Silly is still able to whiff punish the stand one from Hourglass, who, by all intents and purposes, should have been able to get the the challenge there. Should have been able to get a confirmed to get out of the corner, but. What a call from Illy Silly. It wasn't bad to go for the stand one. Just Illy Silly was one step ahead by doing that back dash. And the beautiful Katana gameplay. I, I I, feel like when we look at this match, this was kind of going to be like everyone going for Hourglass of Rain. But Illy Silly really making this Janet Cage work and also putting Hourglass of Rain on the Kung Lao pick instead. Okay, so you're being able to challenge at full screen by going for low hat. So Illy Silly can't just throw fans for free. Does challenge the the fan trap as well without having to put yourself in danger. Ooh, but immediate spin. Oh, didn't get the follow up though. Great usage of that armor launcher as well. And we get the forward throw, which is going to do more damage. 22% because of Hourglass attempting to upwalk in that scenario. The wind up. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's see if this Kung Lao does pay off. We just got the 50% for it. Nice teleport, though, from Hourglass. I think I was trying to go for a launcher there in that moment. And that's going to be a lot of damage here for Hourglass to clean it up 18%. And now that first round goes to Hourglass. The Kung Lao hat uh, pick has been really crucial here. And we're going to be able to continue and hit confirm thanks to the teleport and the Lao Hat uh, reaching. Great start, immediate break. Our glass starting to run away with a strong lead and yo, looking for the birdie, but forgot the low hat and able to get scooped up right to this corner. Our glass. Look at take this round. Here's where Illy Silly starts the momentum. Interesting. Unfortunately, though, still getting hit by that Kung Lao hat. And the sweep is going to take Illy Silly out and Hourglass on the board, tying it one to one. I mean, a great turnaround. Still able to maintain the control with Melina. And I think that turned out a lot better with the impact of Kung Lao Hat, being able to go for your teleports a little more consistently. And this goes right back to that comfort, like you were talking about earlier, for Hourglass to sit on this Kung Lao assist, being able to know where your safety nets are and having that guaranteed backup every single interaction. You kind of get that with the Chameleon assist when you go for Molina Ball or even just go for the lift from Katana. But functionally, it works a little bit differently because you have to think about the timings on those. Whereas Kung Lao, you're used to that timing. 
Nice down one interrupt. Put up a little bit too early though. And now we're gonna start seeing a little bit of that mixture. Oh, the last fan hit actually hitting here, so that's gonna be a bit of a extender for Ellie really Silly, who's gonna also use Breaker right now. Yeah, I don't think we were comfortable enough with that range. Yo, the fan hit at the last second. We tried to get the punish there from full screen, and Hourglass did not leave in time. Beautiful mid check, and that's gonna also lead into the hit confirm for Ball Rope. Traffic is set up. Again, I feel like Hourglass is trying to figure out the timing to adjust accordingly. You do have to be careful with trying to ball roll in that situation. We do open up with the Kazao hat. Not going to get the full hit confirmed, though. And the overhead. Right. Hourglass looking to take the lead here. Jeez, the teleport, but still able to jab it out here. My goodness. Nice backstep again. Illy silly. Always taking a moment here for a single backstep. Trying to catch Hourglass. Challenging at the wrong opportunities. Movement right now from Hourglass. who's trying to catch up to Illy silly. He has that health. It's the punish. Exactly what Hourglass has been trying to look for throughout these uh, games. And that is certainly layered there because Illy Silly was trying to avoid that low hat with that fan toss, which we've seen Illy Silly do before in previous sets. And Hourglass, again, just being able to roll right underneath, still get those punishes. I think we're blocking here. We certainly are. And definitely going to get a punish. Good game. It's 2 1 lead right now for Hourglass. Hourglass looking very much like adapting to Illy Silly's katana which is really solid right now. Uh, having a little bit of trouble opening up again to get the big damage combos that we were seeing earlier in the games. And now it's been Hourglass of Rain who's been able to solidify. I, I like that there was the attempt again on the Chameleon for the first game, but one thing that's been a little bit tricky and I feel like a lot of people who are using Chameleon can agree on, while the glow for uh, Chameleon is pretty good, because mm -hmm. of that invulnerability for projectiles. It doesn't, one, it matters if you're on Jade. So you have to use meter to get to that uh, Jade disguise. Um, and that's if you aren't following along with the timer. And two, you have to be able to time it because even when you're blocking, if you get chip, that glow is gone. So it's like a really special condition of invulnerability compared to like, let's just go back to Kung Lao hat and actually get the dam big damage and setups that we've been like pretty much reliant on uh, to set up here. And exactly like that right here, Hourglass of Rain able to open up Illy Silly who had changed to Sindel and uh, had been well as well. Yeah, I'm trying to go even Stevens here on the setups. Nice jump free. I mean, Illy Silly already down at such a life deficit with the Sindel pick. Ooh, nice! Yo, that tiger knee ball? Okay. Right, yeah, not somebody call out. You are really fishing for it here with the point. I'm not gonna quite give it to you yet. Full screen scenario and hourglass playing the smart there game. Goes. Oh no. I nice. wonder I wonder if Ellie Silly could have tried to interrupt that, but I mean it is a risk, right? Because you're holding mm -hmm. on to it. And it could be let go at any time with just the reactions of our glass of rain. Yeah, totally a great call out because it could have been the down two if you wanted to make sure you got your damage and got out of dodge. Really silly, trying to return the favor, trying to catch things up. What a teleport here from our glass to finish the round. Now, potential set point here for our glass against Really Silly. The switch to Sindel really working out. In their favor. Mmm, detect though. Mm -hmm. Low hat. The flawless. Oh no, shut down the startup of Melina Ball there. Hourglass caught in this corner. With another hat set up a little bit early on the hat, Sen. That was an attempt to ball roll right there, but the down three interrupted uh, Hourglass of Rain, but does win the air to air, forces Illy Silly to break. There goes the teleport, plus on hit, and we're already getting the stagger, stand one stagger into the back throw. 
Oh, nice. I got it down three. Four throw. Full screen scenario with opportunity to go for fireballs, but you gotta go for this Kung Lao setup first. You don't wanna get called out by another teleport. Not after the screen here. Already worked so hard for this position. It does delay the hat just a little bit longer. Oh, beautiful flawless <laughs> buff though yeah. from Ellie Silly. I was just thinking that we have seen Hourglass of Rain, who's been in positions of 25% or less of health, and then Illy Silly with that impeccable defense at the end. But that just turned Hourglass up even more, as we're gonna see that aggression show very quickly here with the mix. And that is a punishment on the screen. Yeah, just a very light one though with that hat. So that's fortunate for Illy Silly. Oh, point. You gotta be careful. And now Hourglass, back of your mind, watching that Illy Silly is fishing for it. Though Kung Lao is on recovery, so you can press that offensive. Beautiful air ball. That's gonna be a ball roll, and that's it. That is all Hourglass wrote. Who's gonna go into the brutal to finish out the food? and we head to winner's finals. Did that hurt? Brutality. Yes. <laughs> your parents. All right. All right. Pain to be dwelled on. It's to be fought right. through. Well, we do have Silence Return coming up against Dark and Go. Said right. here, and I think I saw Jax for Dark. Okay. I'm, I'm a little bit shook because I almost thought we were seeing El Kukui versus Illy. I, yeah, yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> I'm, this is very interesting. <sighs> All right, we got the back throw from Silent Return. Interesting too to see uh, Silent on the Chameleon with Raiden too. That's not one we see usually. The block on the Melina ball roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, again, Raiden is one of those characters that can really utilize Chameleon, but you're right. It's not one of those characters we see too often. I do love this change though, the, uh, the meter change for Jax. When he's out on the field, you know that he's still out there because the color change is such a smart pick and change from uh, this update. Oh, really? I didn't notice that, actually. That's mm -hmm. interesting. I, I, I didn't see it in the uh, caption notes either, so it was a good call out for their uh, zero. That's going to be a fatal blow here from Silence Return. This will not kill. Scaled pretty immensely, which I'm actually kind of shocked. We do have the full slam. Again, that won't kill either. But the fan lift is not going to come into play here or save the day from silence. I can't believe we spent the meter on the double throw to try to send it home and you almost lost it there. That's wild. All right, that one check. No interaction here, but we do have the 4-3-4. Four, four. I almost feel like... I'm still thinking about this chameleon pick. I feel like this is a little bit of a... Too much scaling for damage here that I'm, I'm not too sure if I'm like if I myself am in agreement with uh, how Silence playing this I start to go to the one that's going to be capitalizing off of a lot of damage right now and then there goes that uh, ground pound mm -hmm. yeah I think I think the problem with this pairing is that you have some very tight windows for those combo extensions and you're only going to get them off of Jade and Melina Jade's going to be a little iffy and Melina much more consistent but it's a very tight window and it's going to be off of your stand starters like into this you do get great because that's the serena function you got the confirm right off of it into jade so that's guaranteed damage but the scaling mm. yeah definitely going to be problematic here that was a backer dark to go not believing in the hit confirm it was a size at least while blocking the projectiles to avoid the chip a great block here from the razor ranks now dark to go so have to be careful Yep, there goes that fan. So now is it is tied up on the rounds. Round. Oh my goodness. All right. I'm gonna get the full punish for the electric fly attempt. Big follow up here with Jax. Ground pound activated here. Nice. Use the flip to stay airborne. Those Jax to go out. And now Dark to go can really just walk back. Oh, but very, very scary. That could have been a good hit confirm, but Silence wasn't close enough to actually complete the string for the hit confirm. We have the sweep, so Glow is out. Throw is whiffing, and that is a full wow. punish. Jax is not going to save you from that armor launcher. 
Oh no, didn't get the ground bounce that we were looking for to go for. Electric fly there. I wonder if we were trying to follow up with the Molina ball pickup. I honestly think that's what we were probably going to go for. Just mistimed it. Ground pound, there it is. Okay, there you have it. And we're going to probably see the Brutal here in just a second. There we go. I know those these Katana players, they want they want the Brutal. It's such a cool Brutal, too. I mean, that was a cool Brutal, and how often do you get to see a Katana Brutal, you know? Zero, you don't play a lot of Combat League, do you, huh? I play Combat... They are mm. hiding from me then if you're running into a lot of katanas. I run too I don't run many. In... <laughs> to too many katanas, my friend. I almost too never see katana, you tell me. We're different regions. We're different regions. Do you have crossplay on? Do you have crossplay on? No. No. Yes. Yes, I do, but I don't play anybody on Wi Fi. They're our enemy. I take two percent two percent katana and, and, and Saki's get two percent katana. I get them a lot. I don't know, man. It's crazy because you look at me <laughs> like I'm crazy. They're like I ain't never seen, I've seen maybe one katana in my combat league career. Uh, oh wow, what a great punish! That was actually a great run up uh, into the knee. Back to silence. You know, bread and butter with the Reiko for this one here. But it's gonna be tough to deal with the. Honestly, you do have jacks, right? Ground pound jacks is also a great tool to kind of contend with some of the zoning. And especially when you think about the way that Katana floats right through. Look at this. Oh, but mistimed it. Mm, okay. Yeah, I see what Dark the Goat's trying to do here. It is a slower paced game, but it's still working for uh, Dark the Goat. Now, some of these straight hits, though, if if Dark the Goat's able to convert off of them and, and expect those hits a little bit more often, we, we could definitely be seeing a different change, but uh, that Tremor is not going to fully change, and that is going to be opened up by the Shurikens and then the last hit from Tremor. Oh, nice back four. Good respect on the pressure here from Silent, but we got the double leg takedown. Mm, that is a whiff on the grab. And I like that Dark the Goat's also utilizing the uh, the jumps within the string or some of the lifts from like the, the Picorette because that's anticipating that the Jack's ground pound and that's actually helping uh, Dark to go a lot to avoid getting hit by uh, Jax's grab now. Okay. Hard knockdown here. That's a safe jump. Didn't follow through. We did at least get the, the hit. Nice. Alright, so all tied up in rounds at the very least here. Very dangerous scenario though, and uh, still in it is Dark the Goat, right? You know, was able to maintain a, a strong lead at the outset here. Oh, this character swap. Nice toss. Oh, that's a punish. The fan was actually too far out. And that's going to leave an easy punish for silence. Close to 40%. Oh, the overhead. Overhead. Mm -hmm. Oh, but gets woken up. And then there goes Jack to extend the combo. Yo. Yeah, it's so scary to just see the quick tackle right after. A great kick. It's going to reach further. Dark to go, having to be careful, cannot be whiffing on any of these mid screen checks. That goes out. Again, the shurikens really causing trouble here for Dark to go. Oh, crystalline armor was on. What does that ever happen? I think Dark, I think Silence Return knew. If anything should happen, at least I have the armor on. That's like at least, I want to say 30 seconds of armor that yes, you're getting damage on, but mm. it's less damage. And on top of the fact you're not right. getting hit done in, in the normal way, that was like a checkmate for Silence. True. Who was actually like changing to Crystal Tremor uh, up until like, till that moment and Dark the Goat was just letting it happen. 
Yeah, because I was gonna say to be able to set up the armor in general, it, like takes a little bit there. That's why we don't see it as often. It was definitely a scary prospect when it was first revealed that Tremor armor was gonna be a thing. That was everyone's immediate nightmare of, oh great, Crystalline Tremor's coming back, this is gonna be the problem. And we saw that happen very early on, but never went back to it. And now seeing it here, right, you, like you said, you still take a damage, but you're still able to challenge with a character like Reiko to absorb some of those hits. The air to air off rip, Jesus, silent. Hey, we do see the switch over uh, to Sindel, which I'm actually kind of shocked that, the, that it's the Sindel and not the Molina. But let's see if Dark to Goat has that Sindel. We, the Katana definitely showed that there's a lot of potential. <laughs> Ooh, canceling the run quickly right before Dark to Goat could react. Walked overhead there, that was good. There's still a ton of work and wasn't able to recover time with that single. Wow, that's crazy because it was single glaive toss. It still got hit, but even still, Silent was able to return the favor and take the round. Projectiles are going out a couple of times here. And then there goes the shurikens. Yep, and once again, that glow is going away because of the fact that Dark Goat is already in hit stun. Mm -hmm. So it, it's almost like the, the, the glow is not going to be registering after you're in that um, state. But we do have a big opening here for Dark to go. So it's going to go back. And there goes the glow is on so it can project, it can actually issue projectiles a little bit faster. Right. I've heard of that jump two you were supposed to hit with instead of advance backwards and get too far. It should have been the jump two into a fireball to connect. Still got the combo here off the screen. Okay. Very nicely done here from Dark to Goat to clean up this uh, second round. Kicks down three to go for the counter hit, and then backs away just a little bit just in case uh, Silence Return tries to respond with the poke. Interrupts the cartwheel armor. Mm -hmm. Go being Jeez. a little bit more quicker on the reactions against that run. Trying to come down here, good flawless block. Got a couple ducks, waiting for that meter to burn out there because we are still building up for Silent. We could throw all day. Oh, Trevor coming in the nick of time to save Silent just a little bit here. And this is full bar Tremor, so we're just trying to switch through, cycle through those variations. The down three, the you know, the stare down because at any given moment, it's the DDT to finish it off here. Two one lead for Silence Return. Very nicely done. I, I feel like the Reiko pick. I mean, I get it. Sometimes you want to try your new characters. You want to go into the tournament. And you want to be like, you know what? Let's actually ch test out, uh, you know, some of the stuff that we've been working on. Uh, especially with like Chameleon and then, of course Raiden, but the Reiko's just been consistent all night tonight. Yeah, like you, he's such a threat at the full screen to so much of the cast. Man, I don't blame you for picking this character. You just create such a stressful scenario because he gets a ton of chip off a of regular toss and then has the meter burn opportunity that covers so much of the screen. And you have Trevor that is building in the background anyway. So it gives a sense of urgency to the opponent to say, I need to make this approach to stop you from setting up Tremor. But if I had the life lead, there's no need to approach, which is honestly what Dark the Goat was kind of playing around anyways. Going for a lot of Katana toss to contend at the full screen scenario. Jax was a big help. But now we're going back to Molina with Tun Lao. Nice stand one to get the extension with the low hat. There we go. Yep, here goes this launcher. And that's going to be a hard knockdown. And we have the full uppercut here from Tremor. It's going to force Dark to go to break. And then the down one check. Jeez. Yep, media cancel. Could have been challenged right there with the down one, though, from uh, Dark to go. Walls walked into the chip, but this is the launcher that Dark to go was waiting for. Gets Kung Lao Hat and also the overhead. And another overhead as well. Great block, though, with the low size. 
And I don't... Oh, we're not gonna go... We're not gonna spend it. Oh, wow! That was such a smart play there from Silence to actually just jump and mess up the auto target from the homing ball. Yeah. Very quick thinking here. And able to irk out a victory with just a, a single pip of health left over. Silent gonna get this corner pick up one more time. As well as blocking, allowing Silence to actually punish Dark the Goat for the string. Very, really great knowledge check, first oh of all. Gosh. Yeah. Nice duck! Are you kidding me? Dark the Goat responding with another knowledge check here. That's definitely catching Silence off guard. We do have, are able to block the Kumau hat. We're not going to be able to avoid the throw though, so that's going to be thrown back into the corner. At the flawless but low hat to back you up here. Dark the Goat going to get caught trying to backdash. Mm. The third bar is going to come back here. I do like that Silence went for the shurikens instead. Mm -hmm. and now she's gonna wait patiently for to get to sleep, not allowing Dark to go to even go for any form of a breaker. Now, Silent taking it 3 1 over Dark to go. I mean, like, this past couple weekends has been because we had the crossover arc just happened last yes. weekend, and now we got Bugs of that coming out. So that is that's crazy. All right, jam packed weekends aside for just a moment here, let's check it out here with El Kakui winners finals against our glass of rain. The homing uh, ball here. You're not gonna be able to really punish the katana fan lift. Unfortunately, not working because the shurikens actually took out uh, katana or chameleon in that moment. And Juicy Dealers, thank you so much for the three dollar contribution and helping complete the match. You know, to sixty dollars right now. Right. Oh, oh. Let's go for the block there. Zoning again, you know, interesting. We're going to be going into this uh, El Kukui on Reiko this time. I want to make that call out real quick, you know, just uh, versatility of the player out here, folks. Nice, willing to ball roll, but immediate break. I think El Kukui just trying to play both what's comfortable for him while also mm -hmm. playing what's comfortable in this matchup. And I think that this is perfect as a uh, this could definitely challenge Hourglass quite a bit. There goes some of that mix into that low side. Backing away just a little bit, gets the overhead, and then the forward throw, or sorry, back throw, to continue the combo, and I was no! actually- No! Oh, no! Oh, oh Hourglass is recovering! That is tragic. That was supposed to be Hourglass of Rain's mat, or not match, round, but unfortunately drops. Got a little bit too far out in the combo. And El Kukui able to wake up immediately with Fatal Blow. Big call out here and stealing it away. Trying to switch to Melina's Jade. Sorry, uh, Chameleon Jade disguise to get that glow up and running. But unfortunately, because of that 1 2 whipping, that's going to be a counter hit for El Kukui. He's going to be able to continue and extend the combo to get the 42%. Spending a lot of resources in this moment. I mean, look at the life lead that you got for it. Like, Jesus. Nice overhead, and we can chip away if we want to. Well, then there is the teleport. Yeah, I can't, can't ever. I would have got hit. Essentially, what happened, I got hit. Nice sweep. And this is it out. Very solid sweep there from Kui. Uh, calling out, and good patience, too. I was going to mention that, like, that's actually something that I was learning this past weekend with Melina and Chameleon uh, with the Katana fan lift. Uh, mm. It's very tricky, though. And I think that's the biggest thing about the Katana fan lift, that if you're watching this VOD or if you're watching this uh, this broadcast and then watching the VOD later, if there's one thing to learn is uh, that the Chameleon and Katana's disguise with fan lift, Melina. it's such a tricky situation because yes it lets you escape certain situations but it doesn't really give you the invincibility like a motaro teleport for example right right and right. then on top of that like yes you can get the lift to can extend combos but the hitbox that you're gonna have to deal with to continue those combos is very a it's a very tight window timing right. and hitbox hitbox on it 
Yeah, quite often a lot of the aerial routes are kind of tight. If you want examples of it, like just immediate examples, Omni-Man air combos is very much like that. What a beautiful jump in here from Hourglass. He's gonna get the side switch thanks to that last ball roll. Dagger didn't believe in the full combo or just wanted to take the, the dunk anyways. Nice. Fan lift out of the corner. We do see Chameleon get hit by the Shuriken. There goes the ball roll. Not gonna actually punish. Was pretty close for it too, so... That's crazy. At the last moment, Shuriken also hit the Molina ball roll. We got the advancement with Katana Fan, which I think is also great. You go for a projectile, you already in. You already have the opponent in hit stun, so you have a safe opportunity to close the gap without dashing. Kui switching over uh, to switch to Tremor Crystalline and to set up Tremor again once the full combo does land. Both players in Fatal Blow territory right now. Glow is up, but we do see Hourglass oh, turn the back no. off, and there goes the slide! The walls were literally closing in for Hourglass of Rain in that scenario. As the corner got closer and closer, Hourglass needed to do something. And I'm not sure if it was the low side there, because as you can see, El Kikui was able to punish very quickly. But something to stop that forward advancement from El Kikui at, at the very least. Okay, great air to air. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to hit confirm into the slide. The down one check, but beautiful throw tech here. It was a back throw tech as well. Great call out from El Kikui. Blocks mm -hmm. the ball roll. And Hourglass didn't have a bar, uh, full three bars to actually break through that. Life lead for El Kikui. Gonna try to zone it out here to chip away at the health of Hourglass. And Hourglass just seems very hesitant to make an approach because we still see that constant you know, pressure coming from El Kikui there with projectiles really covering the screen, making things difficult for Hourglass to close the gap. Again, the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Low size, just in case it, it does hit. We brought up the Molina size, but El Kukui closing in. And get through the strings, but get hit by the Jade Razor Glaze. Oh boy. We got 15 seconds left. This next interaction needs to take you. Oh no, that's not what we were looking for here. That's a full punish, and that should. Yeah, that's honestly it. Unless you get Fatal Blow like immediately, that would have been it. And you also have Breaker available for El Kukui. Yes. Ooh, that is a lot of punches there. Rot like those before you. Brutality. Wow. Rako did did everyone just rot? Like, what what do you mean rot? Like, you know, I wanted to mention something about continuity, uh, zero. Mm-hmm. Why does Reiko get to punch the same amount of punches that Havoc punches in his fatal blow? But his full fist get destroyed. Well, because Havoc is brittle and frail. Or Havoc is punching so hard that his fist explodes. He is chaos incarnate, right? So okay, that's fair. you know, maybe he that's doesn't proper. punch right. You know, there are there are wrong and right ways to punch people. And Havoc doesn't punch correctly. So his hands get destroyed. You know what? That's a good that's a good call out. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad you asked the one person that questions the realism of Mortal Kombat consistently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that armor uh, grab as well. Uh, avoiding the Kung Lao hat to then get, grab uh, Hourglass of Rain in this moment. It's probably the first time we've seen Hourglass of Rain down at such a deficit in the match, especially against El Kukui for this winner's final. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's all. Again, it is what Hourglass has brought to the table time and time again to get so many TNS victories, to see them through so many matches in these top eights. It's a strong start for El Kikui though in this game three. And I wonder if we started with just, you know, Kung Lao at the outset, if we see a different result, or if we see, you know, a, a much closer matchup in particular. Now your back is against the wall here. You're still trying to push El Kukui back towards that wall with this throw. 
Beautiful. Nice. Two. Keep in the corner. That jump kick also into the air ball. It's gonna grab as much damage as possible, but there goes the amp shurikens. Oh my gosh, the stare down right now between these two. It's who wants to crack first, you know, and El Kukui is knows that they have the damage output to keep up with the output of Melina, but Melina's only gonna open you up one of two ways. And on a full screen scenario, you can kind of whittle down the options that Hourglass has. Without Kong Lao trying to trick you, you're kind of safe to just chill out. Yeah, El Kukui being a little bit antsy to try to walk Hourglass down, but you have to be careful of Kung Lao Hat and on top of that, any strings that Hourglass has plus ball roll. So it's like right now El Kukui having to be that aggressor, but struggling. There goes the anti-air and we get the side switch too for Hourglass. Still a potential set point though for El Kukui. Trying to keep full screen scenario here against Hourglass. But does find the approach. Low hat does help out here. Yes, it should, honestly. If you throw out a hat like that, it better help you. Again, full screen here. El Kukui does have to, once again, walk down Hourglass. Right. Hourglass is the one who has, who's still at full health, actually. <laughs> choosing to duck most of the shurikens, and El Kukui finally getting back a bar as well. You can keep zoning out here, but eventually you're either going to get knocked down with low side, teleport could come through. The startup might get interrupted though, which is probably why we have our glass kind of holding out. Honestly, life lead also will kind of keep you chilling. Like, why bother? I've not lost enough ground to really try to warrant a teleport opportunity. Spends meter. Yeah, we can just chill. Hourglass is playing the smart game, honestly. Yeah, this is as, like this is honestly what I expect from Hourglass in this uh, scenario. But we do get that uh, slight aggression here. We have the up block, but it's not going to stop the homing ball from being unpunishable. Oh, no! 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 You wanted the chip. What you need to do? Oh my God! You wanted the chip. You didn't get it. You're not killing with this fatal blow. I, at least I hope not. Jesus Christ! You oh are! My God, you, you are! are. <laughs> You're so dead! You're... Oh, no! No! Hourglass! No! Oh, it was supposed to be. It was just supposed to be. <laughs> Chip killing you didn't get it. Didn't get it. And that's not a curse! I didn't curse that My chat. Is no You're gaslighting me right now? I, I don't appreciate <laughs> it, okay? I don't like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, well, going to this loser semi, silent. Picking out Reiko once again. Red Nose out here with Kenshi. Right. Once again, Silence Return with the Reiko pick. I do agree. I think this, these two picks from these two players is perfect. Go with your mains. Stick yep. with what you know. This is this is where you need to be, especially if you want to make it to losers finals and face against the uh, uh, Hourglass. I couldn't agree more. Like this is the moment where you really have to lock in, as the kids like to say. You know, see who goes up against Hourglass in this losers finals. Free set up for Sento, so we're gonna catch up on damp. We're going to catch up on damage. Thank you. Okay, Sento sandwich. Sento trying to... Now on cooldown, actually. We do get the grab, and that also keeps Sento on cooldown, and he should disappear as well. So this is Silent Return's opportunity to just keep it going. Gets the overhead and backs away just a little bit. Full shurikens out. Beautiful. Waiting for the drop. Um, onto Red Nose to land and then fully punish. Great walk back here from Silence as well to avoid getting hit by the back one. I mean, look at this. Locked in. Already had the charge hit. Oh, blesses the dome. Nice Sento pickup with the air combo to follow. Okay. I didn't even know you had time to actually bring out Sento in that instance. 
This is gonna be corner pressure. We're also gonna charge up the meter, so Sensor gets to stay out longer. Again, these kicks. It is Kenshi's and Sensor's turn. This is, oh my god, this is all Kenshi right now. But just the slightest of a hit, practically almost the flawless in that round. Oh man, <laughs> one, two, one, two. That's all I was counting was pop, pop. Papa, like, there's no time for you to get out here. You have full meter, no armor. Lord have mercy. It's gonna be an early break breaker from silence. Does the launcher. We're gonna see another corner pressure situation here from Red Nose. Charges up the Sento meter. And again, Sento stays on the field. Oh, no. We're gonna get the overhead. Well, as oh no! Punish. That is a full punish into a brutal as well. Brutality. Did, did Silent get to get out of that corner? Uh, no, no, just. You know, you spent $70 on this game just to hold that corner, huh? Actually, Zero, some of us paid $80 and $100 to block. Okay, that's also fair. Very fair. I did pay that eighty. I need, I need my DLC. I mean, most games right now are between seventy to eighty, so it doesn't surprise me. Every meal's a banquet. Every formation. Oh, so we paid forty-four. Nice. Got the savings. We all know you went to uh, other, other, uh, uh, the deals. You waited for the deals. To ever pay forty dollars. <laughs> it sounded so upset about that. I am. <laughs> I yeah, am. You, you shouldn't have saved money, anyways. <laughs> that time was to get charged up on the field and launching. Beautiful anti-air though from Silent. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, the sword toss! How are you at full screen and still holding the left side of the screen, Silent? How is this happening? Fight back! <laughs> Oh, that sword didn't even hit silence despite recovering from the run, but we have the full forward grab that's gonna seal the deal for Red Nose. Fight. Right, armored up one more time. Oh, did not get the anti air, but we're still able to pressure. Nice. Keep it running. Ooh. Slow freeze. Sento set up, of course. The damage is about to build. Cross over. There goes the Sento sandwich. That could have been a nice anti-air, I feel like, for uh, Red Nose, but mm -hmm. still gonna take all of this damage. Sento is now in cooldown. And again, yeah, no meter to actually continue with Sento. Now one check. There goes the grab. Okay. Trevor setups are still active here, able to corner carry into Fatal Blow, but this is breakable. We're not breaking it? I think Ragnos thinks that he'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, you're certainly living. I'm just... And I don't blame you for not trying to spend the break, because you're going to carry into another round, even if you lose this one, with all that meter. So it's oh, not... you see, I figured this is exactly why. And it's because of that Sub-Zero push. That was an opportunity to go put the sword back. And resummon Sento, and now look, Red Nose, Red Nose has had all of that bar to work with, and safely work with as well. Very fair. Okay, several layers in, we do have the armor up. Okay, Crystalline armor up. It's the no. only gone. No whip punish on the throw. We do get the throw this time though. Wow. Red Nose with the savings plan in advance. Don't think I didn't catch that, first of all. <laughs> Don't think I didn't catch that pun, Zero. Okay? All right? Second of all, um, I, I really want to compliment Red Nose for that smart decision making. In most player cases, the urge to break, especially during a fatal blow, to reset neutral is there. But instead, Red Nose is like, let me keep my bar of meter and then I can get back my win condition, which yeah. is Sento. 
so and that was seen... really smart. Yeah, it, it's a great call out because we've seen so many times in this full screen scenario, Red Nose takes the lead every time because we do have ice armor up. Nice set into Sento setup with Freeze. No cross through because we're already next to the corner. Is full corner pressure again? Red Nose is literally dominating this corner and giving nothing of an inch to silence. Oh, okay, that one, yeah. All right, we're trying to challenge, but we got the low with the down three and already fighting tooth and nail out of the corner for a side swap. Silent trying to make this comeback here. We're gonna get scooped up for the trouble, and right back in the corner you go. Okay, potential set point here for Red Nose, who's been grinding out of these loser side over and over again. Ooh. Nice break. Oh, jeez, I can't believe the Shuriken won out in that interaction. It looked like Sword was about to connect. No follow up with a run here. Immediate break from Silent. Yeah, despite that uh, having a long, uh, like uh, a design that looks like it can reach. Uh, it, it looks like that hitbox is not as far-reaching as you would think. Mm -hmm. And shurikens have been the mid-screen check. There goes the ice armor. We do have Sento out now, but he does get hit. Oh, but he comes in to save the day there from the grab! And then again, corner dominance here charges up the Sento meter, so it is all Kenshi's game right now. Bop, 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 bop. Three, four. No, not the three, four. It's the whole red. No, I was wrong. This is three, all four. Kenshi's turn. Oh my god. It's crazy. One, two, three, four. My turn again. Every time. Oh, Sento is still man. there. There's the toss. Wow. The brutality. What do you. It, it is the Jujutsu Kaisen bullying. It is. It is. When Hourglass is playing with Kung Lao, it's not because Kung Lao is allowing her to get that damage output. It is literally just because of the potential that she already has to begin with. So here we go. Starting off with Kung Lao this time around. But Kenshi with Cyrax on Red Nose. Jeez. Yeah, that was good. Using the mid side to actually contest. But there goes the Cyrax to allow the safe setup for Sento. And now he is ready. Again, the corner is Red Nose's domain. There goes the overhead. He's gonna have to block all of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we charge up on Sento too. Very smart call here. Still gonna juggle into this corner. Yeah, and again, like you said before the match started. How do you escape from this scenario? And it's so difficult for Hourglass to really try that, try and find that way out. We do get the stand one and a back throw. Oh, beautiful. Again, another Sento setup. And Hourglass of Rain struggling against, uh, against actually stopping the Cyrax from going out. The whiff grab though here. Exactly what Red Nose needed. There was at least a very smart call out here from Hourglass of Rain using the low hat as a position to stay away from Sento and also interrupt Sento's approach. So it shut down Sento for a little bit. Hourglass now getting this lead with an overhead start. Bird of Prey follows through and does get the counter hit against Red Nose. Final round, fight. Okay, female hat goes out. I'm trying to find the spacing, backing up just a little bit. The mid side, or the high sides to check the mid screen. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a forward throw. For the full string setup, we do open up here. There goes. Oh wow! Cyrax actually helping uh reestab like rebalance uh the hourglass in that moment, and then of course Sento coming through. The teleport right, does get punished. Unfortunate. Oh no. Oh and boy. All over again. There's the armor teleport. Nice. Just in the nick of time. We almost have another bar here. That's a fine spin. You're gonna get it right back in just a moment, but play the runaway game. We've seen this happen before with Hourglass going up against El Kakui. But once those walls start closing in, it's, panic starts to set in, it seems like for Hourglass here. We have another little hat, tries to open up. Nice duck, are you kidding wow. me? 
Red that Nose letting go of block at just the last moment. Oh no, the homing ball though, catching Red Nose in that very moment too. What a read from Red Nose, but he had to be, he had to summon, resummon Sento to be able to actually continue pressure. Right. And because of that, what didn't realize that Hourglass of Rain was able to get out or jump back and then go into the homing ball. Another one of those risky interactions, too. It's an anti arable opportunity if Red Nose is ready for it. It's something we saw against El Kakui holding that full charge Molina ball. So maybe Red Nose takes note of that in these upcoming games, but Red Nose still picking Cyrax, which is great because you could do, even if you weren't ready for the, the anti air just off of Kenshi alone. You could go for helicopter from from Cyrax as an anti air option and still get that charge. I have to throw text. It was a back throw. And the high glass is gonna get the hard knockdown. Safe jump in. Flawless blocking though. The last nice. hit off is a string, so that was a counter hit. Plus Cyrax coming in with helicopter. Sandwich between, of course. Stagger for one, two, three, four. You got, the, I have the rhythm at this point. One, two, three, four. Imagine if you become a Kenshi now, dear. Jeez, you know what? You, that's the whole reason why I draw smoke. I don't want to, I don't want to work hard. This should be a meaty. Yes, it is. That's going to yeah. actually take out the startup frames of the armor and stop the fatal blow from happening. Fight. Holy cow. Ooh. Hit stagger and then using Cyrax's full meter to then go into the Ken uh to into Sento. Oh gosh, one, three, two. Four. One, two, <laughs> three, four. It's no overhead yet. Next one will be. Oh. I, Sorry, I, I betrayed you! <laughs> Yo, this this is why you're on comm zero and not I, in these matches. Well, but at the same time, we both took the risk. That is the thing. Like, we both were in that moment where we both thought it's time to take a risk. We both guessed wrong. <laughs> so I'm there where Hourglass is mentally blocking this. I'm like, okay, eventually I have to take a chance. Take down one to take out Sento. Charges up quickly, though. So Sento's back into play mm -hmm. out of the cooldown. Once again, oh, no. dashing up, Sento Bar, now gone. Ooh, nice. Yeah, very good hard to blockable situation there for Hourglass. Going for immediate fatal blow, just to try to catch up. This should be, I want to say this is going to be like 47%. Yeah, 46. Yeah, after you put Kenshi through PTSD again by throwing size already in his eyes anyways. Okay. See why... Uh, yeah, oh, no! there it is. That's exactly what Red Nose was looking for and, and why he went into Sento so far away. Brutality. You can, you know, out zone Molina at that point and you have enough time to set up the Sento to get the sword toss and just follow up through it. We were already committed to another fireball opportunity, you know, try to throw out more Psy. Probably try to set up another Kung Lao hat eventually. I missed out on where the cameo meter was after that last toss. So far, going back and forth right now, tying up the games. It's going to be one to one for Red Nose and Hourglass. Would it be fair if I had to fight blind? Round one, fight. Nice down one. Yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me? Hi, I would like to know where the Kung Lao hat went in that uh, that moment. Did you just dance around it? Is that Kenshi? Hello? I'm actually curious. Is that a tech for Kenshi to use that? Because I know that particular special, you can uh, avoid projectiles, but I never figured below projectile. Yeah, I didn't really think about that either. Like, because it is a projectile either way. So, yeah. Ooh, I mean, a good call out for the down one into uppercut. Mm -hmm. It was a risk. 
It does have the health. Oh, rip, but, uh, I don't know about this. Yeah, spend it to try to catch up and go for break. All right, so next round, there's no meter, but what does that even mean for Red Nose with this life lead here? We go for net. That's all right. It's okay. That was like a bait for Hourglass to actually do teleport, and it works yep. out in Red Nose's favor. Absolutely, because either you block it, take the chip. If you get caught by it, well, I, I win. Utilizing Cyrax as that... Additional layer of defense, low hat, hard to block situation. And just like that, Hourglass, massively. Meter burn to get out of the struggle situation. We do have Ren Nose with a full bar of meter, so there is that that um, as well. That King Lao hat into his overhead. That overhead so potent as a as a Melina character, uh, like as a Melina player. If you're not utilizing that overhead as often as you should be, you you need to start changing that because it is super potent. Yeah. It also opens up your opponent for other opportunities. You can try to sneak in her other overheads off of strings, but you're seeing here like Hourglass attempting to go for that route. You have to make sure you have like a low hat on top of it or another cameo assist to really kind of coax the player into blocking low. Here's the breaker. Gonna lead into the command grab ender. Fourth throw the mouth hits. I like that. And then you're gonna have to take that overhead. Yep. Red nose using breaker. So that would have been a very for sure kill in that moment. Final touch situation on both sides. Both with a fatal blow. It's single touch and a fatal blow on either side here. While I was walking the Kung Lao hat to avoid getting chip damage. I'm surprised we haven't seen an overhead from Red Nose. Well, remember, well, he's not, he, he's actually not in, uh, in Sento, in, in, in like, cheap, uh, the sword's not cheap. So no trick teleports, trick no, 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 none of that actually right now, but it is okay. Hourglass that takes it here. It is so scary to go to, um, you know, cheat the sword anyways, because mm -hmm. that is that teleport punish opportunity from Hourglass, or even just goes from Belina Ball, like, so many tools in her arsenal to quickly close that gap. That could make that troublesome for Red Nose. So that was definitely a very scary scenario on either side with that final touch scenario. But Hourglass advancing 2-1 so far in the set for Losers Finals. Yeah, so I do see... I, d I see Red Nose struggling just a little bit because of the reaction timing that Hourglass has. Rea the reactions on Hourglass is insane. Yeah, it, and it's always been critical to see that reaction timing. We saw it, you know, again, off of floats, off of very tight windows of opportunity to get punishes. Like, Hourglass is just right there immediately after the opportunity presents itself. Jeez. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's a nice trait, though. You didn't get into a bigger combo. You take the hat damage every day. Not even close enough to allow Sensor to take us down uh, Hourglass. And Hourglass is just plain super solid. Has already adapted to what Red Nose is dishing out. And this is why I say when it comes to Ken the Kenshi matchup, they're pretty even, pretty consistent in the way that they've been playing as long as they're going and starting out with that Kung Lao hat that has been that bread and butter for a lot. And then down one to take out Sento. Very risky, but it works. Yeah, that was great timing right there because traditionally you're going to be locked down by Cyrax. That opportunity did not happen there for Red Nose, so you could sneak in that down one. Yo, run up throw just to avoid the Sento pressure from behind and made it just in the nick of time there to get that throw. Oh no, unfortunately didn't believe in the mid hit confirm. Tried to go for the grab as a, re as a reaction response. <laughs> Walks the net just in time. Yep. Big job. Ooh, Yo, the it. deepest of jump-ins. Are you kidding me? I didn't have Bart to do the low side. Flawless blocking the high size. There goes the sweep and then the mid check. And that is all Hourglass wrote in this opportunity. And we're going to see Hourglass go for the rematch against El Kakuli on the winner's or grand final side. Grand final. Oh, oh, I will it for you.
Have I I'm really? this the royal ear? Yeah. Great character. Honestly, I I really I really do like Peacemaker and I remember first picking up I thought, man, I think Peacemaker is gonna be very technical and I see the you know the practical routing that a lot of players are utilizing. Man, actually, Peacemaker isn't so bad. He has a very simple access route that you can go for, but a lot of creative options depending on the camera you're picking with. And you know, Chameleon definitely very helpful. Well, it looks like it's being super helpful right now because thanks to that restand and that safe jump, they're back on this full screen range, and we're already taking out uh, Hourglass of Rain with uh, the glow. And once again, this is where I was mentioning earlier that glow does the trick in a lot of situations, but not necessarily what you really need um, when you need to have a consistent answer. For that, sometimes it can be a choice to go to uh, Sub-Zero, but you have to wait for that Jake disguise to come through and then hope that you don't get tripped out like we've been seeing here from our class. Interesting usage to punish uh, the eagle, eagle throw. Oh jeez, down one. Oh yes, we can make that forward approach. And the ton of fan lift as mm -hmm. well. Eagles. You ever wonder if you should just gift uh, Eagly a helmet? The amount of times that Eagly headbutts. You know, maybe, but it might impair the vision of Eagly. You have to get a very specific helmet for Eagly. Like some goggles for you. Yeah, maybe like a flight helmet would work out. I think that'd be pretty cool. I, th I think Peacemaker would probably knit that himself. I think he would do that. A hey, good call oh out here from uh, Hourglass going to Fatal Blow. This should kill, so that's going to be going to Hourglass in the second round. Party All right, a strong start either way for El Kakui. Oh my god, and still was able to get out in just the nick of time, but this is a full punish there. Yep, four. There goes nice, Ooh, already got the Jade. Nice. The Jade Shade helping out here. Did you see? I love that. I think El Kukui is the first person that I've seen that says, you know what, you're gonna go for that homing ball? I dare you. I mean, it just shoot the spitball. It's like, I got it. <laughs> All right. Gunshot here. He tries to get, you know, it can. The timing's a little finicky, but it can anterior. You are committed to that meter burn on the gunshot. And if you get that second bullet going through, remember, chat, it does get that restand for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Certainly not the ideal anterior, of course, for uh for Peacemaker, but it's an option. It, it's more of like a, a trip guard situation. Uh, and again, it's a very tricky trip guard. So you have to be like kind of careful. Peacemaker. Booyah. Right, lock back into Peacemaker still, but double chameleon. I'm not doing it. I'm not saying the thing. dude must be related. No. We share the Leave that mission. song alone, chat. I I can't remember the song now. And I had I literally listened to it the other well, day. Well, good. How did you listen to it the other day? You can't. Re uh, anyway. Oh no, you already committed. So that is going to be the free dive kick. This is a lot of damage too. Mm -hmm. Thirty percent, pretty solid already on the start. And again, that glow. Start, still caught in the startup. And then the sweeps right after the Jade Blade coming back. It goes easily through. Oh, again, oh. the dart! I, love, I really do love that the dart is actually stopping Hourglass from actually utilizing that homing ball. It, it's it's really calling it out every single time. We're going to have the re uh, armor reversal torpedo. We're also seeing shades of that previous game in winners finals between these two of just all oh, wrong angle. That's unfortunate. Of uh, a moment of pause from hourglass and those full screen scenarios of just how do I approach this? Like how do I close this gap? Soul check, eagerly to get the room. 
Oh, nice. Very good course correct right there from our glass of rain because that was a little messy. We still had the consistency with a couple of stand ones. Mm. Nice. I feel like in that moment, instead of going for the dart, just going for like either an up block or an anti air would have been better for Elk Kui. Yeah, it, it's. I think the difference is that if he just got that regular, um, you know, air dart, then you would have been able to follow up after get more damage. But you're totally right. Up block would have been better, or even just keep it simple with the standard uh, anti air. Ooh, that was scary. That could have been a very dangerous punish. There is nice. the up block, and easy hit confirm into fatal blow. Also gonna uh, allow Hourglass to get one bar instead of multiple um, recharge on the second bar. So mm -hmm. Hourglass is gonna have to work a little bit hard onto this last round uh, to try to get back a uh, full, full three stack bar, and that's a punish. Yeah, Sonic Boom follows up into the corner. Back dash is there. Still got force field. No! Oh, nice ball roll. Wasn't ready to low block. Ooh. Whoa, what was that? Uh, I missed it. I missed it. Something interacted there. We did send something out. <gasps> no, Eagly was still on cooldown. Yeah, that's unfortunate. There we go. We got the side switch. We stand into Jay's blaze. Force field. Dart. Oh, but didn't call out the teleport. Mm -hmm. And then here's the restand here from Hourglass. Oh, oh no! No oh, punish, no! no. Alright, no jumps. We do have Jade Shade applied. Good block, but Helmet is not going to work out here. You're going for the brutality right now. Oh, there it no. is! Calling it out with the dart. Again, that dart, it, it was the right call to call out Hourglass, who's been using that homing ball consistently in their game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, like you said, they were definitely trying to go for the brutal a couple of times. It's definitely fishing. I saw that first torpedo on the call from Camila. But no, no, no. You are, you're fishing for brutality. So here that? we go. 2-0 lead for El Kakui in grand finals. Peacemaker. Yeah. Still the exact same setup here from Hourglass of Rain. No Kung Lao. But I guess ultimately there's no point in Kung Lao because of force field from Peacemaker being so consistent. That's always off the table at this point. Like, yeah, you get some projectiles from Melina and even from Chameleon. But as long as force field is a factor, it's just off the table. Yeah, there's not really much you, you can um, actually do in those situations. So. Like I said, the J goes there. It's working for when it needs to. But El Kukui's force field plus just the timing has been excellent. But that was a great spacing there from Hourglass. Yep. Excellent. Make it count. Yeah, 40% damage. That was good. Beautiful fan lift. And I'm going to force El Kukui to use the breaker. No jumps. That was very risky right there. Had a couple air darts. And yeah, don't forget, upward angle on that eagly. The launcher, and then the side switch. That shit corner carry, too. And then see how Kukui switch over to Melina here. I'm wondering if it's just because that's going to lead and get into the Jade Blade, which has been really solid every yeah. single time. Force field bull, immune to projectiles for a moment. Nice, with the katana cancel. Oh my oh god. god. Oh, Kukui. That was that so that smart. I don't think Hourglass even mind. expected that. And now we're in potential set point, plus that failable also gets to stay. So El Kukui, great leader management right mm -hmm. through there. He used it to cash it all. And then we got the flawless block on the ball roll. Pure reaction there from El Kukui. Yep, already had to teleport. You're already in the sky, committed. If you would have fell through, you would have gotten the restand option. That would have been an eagly combo. Down four. Oh, that down one does not reach at all. Mm -hmm. The block. Full punish, yeah. 
Yeah, that's the one thing that I feel like hurts Hourglass a lot here is that because there's no Kung Lao hat to keep the teleport safe, it's really tough. That's it! That's it! Oh, no! Drop. The fan left dropping! Oh, that was a misinput. That was supposed to be it, but we got it! Still, another brutality and a 3 0 victory for El Kakui utilizing Peacemaker here at Tampa Never Sleeps.